thousand on hand tonight. And we're live from Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, just outside Buffalo, New York. ABC's NFL Thursday Night Edition. The Minnesota Vikings, who beat the Buccaneers 17 to 10, to go 1 and 0. Take on the Buffalo Bills, who also won their season opener 14 to 9 against the Kansas City Chiefs. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by the Buick Motor Division and your Buick dealer, who proudly announced the 1983 Buicks. And by Miller High Life, the best beer for the best time of the day. Welcome to Miller Time. Hello again, everyone. Welcome aboard, and we're talking proud, too. Quite a scene, isn't it? Talking proud of our matchup tonight. The Vikes against the Bills. We hope it will come up to that marvelous matchup of this past Monday, the Steelers against the Cowboys. But in truth, overhanging the affair, the threatened strike. Quickly, this update. The management people, the labor people, meet tomorrow morning. It's what they call crunch time in labor management relations. Maybe, hopefully, strides of progress will be made. If not, according to Ed Garvey, the executive director of the NFL Players Association, a strike will be called next Tuesday morning. But right now, let's have fun with tonight's game, and let's get the gif on the Bills. Well, it's crunch time here, too, Howard. The Buffalo Bills, let's take a quick look at them. They think they can make the playoffs again, but there are a lot of people think that they're talking nonsense without the likes of Joe Cribbs. He remains a holdout. They're a gifted receiver and running back. And they do have Jerry Butler back. He was instrumental in a win over Kansas City last week. They've lost Shane Nelson, perhaps their finest defensive player. So the Buffalo Bills, if they're going to do it, they're going to have totally... They have lost two of their best football players, and we don't know about Joe Cribbs. We'll talk about that during the course of the game. So Francis with us tonight. The Vikes, you're the resident expert. Well, I'll tell you, they can play offense, and they got Charlie Johnson a few weeks ago to help them play defense. That's what they need to improve if they're to go back to the playoffs this year. Let's throw it to Giffen. Let's get it kicked off, Howard. Right. Let's get the game started, Giffer. 80,000 on hand. They do indeed love their football here in Buffalo. And Minnesota has won the toss. They will receive the football. Nick Mickemeyer will put the ball on the tee to get things underway and dropping deep for the Minnesota Vikings. There he is, Walter's little brother, Eddie Payton, a dangerous return man, one of only five return men a year ago who was able to navigate the complete distance of the field. He did it on a Monday night game against Oakland. He went 99 yards, so we know he can do it. He did it a few years ago when he was playing with Detroit. We're set to go. Listen to that crowd. Nickemeyer hangs it high, short at the four, and here comes Eddie Payton. Opening an Eddie Payton out of the 30-yard line where Minnesota will have a first down and 10. Charles Rome's in there for the stop, and here comes Tommy Kramer, a healthy Tommy Kramer, healthy not only physically but also mentally. Last week, 17 to 10 over Tampa Bay. Tommy was 16 of 28, 131 yards, one touchdown. Darren Nelson, you saw him in the tees. He is a very special football player out of Stanford University, the number one draft pick. Kim Irwin on the right side replaces, of course, the longtime All-Pro there, Ron Yeri. They say he does the job. We'll watch tonight. First down, 10. Kramer looks it over. The ball at the 31-yard line. Ted Brown is the other setback, number 23. Kramer on first down and 10, going deep, overthrowing Sammy White on the outside. It'll be second down and 10 as we take a look at the defensive unit of the Buffalo Bills. They rated seventh in the NFL a year ago. They had 47 sacks, some of them from these men in their 3-4 defense. At 47 sacks, the third best in the entire NFL. Where they have hurt, perhaps, is at the inside linebacker on the right side, the strong side, if you will. Gene Marv is there, a rookie from Saginaw Valley State, replacing Shane Nelson, one of the fine defensive linebackers in football. Shane Nelson probably lost for the season with an injury from last week. It is second down and 10, the ball at the 31-yard line. Kramer is back again. They come to pass, do the Vikings. Sammy White, he takes it over midfield to the 48-yard line. Buffeted there by Bill Simpson, but it will be a Minnesota first down. Sammy White, Ahmad Rashad, Terry LeCount, the three wide receivers. And we'll take a look now at Sammy White's pattern. Well, here comes Sammy White. You hear a lot about Ahmad Rashad, but Sammy White is about as good. He's got double coverage, as you see. He made an outside move. Kramer delivered the ball. Completion. 
First down and 10. The ball inside the 49 yard line. The third wide receiver is in. That's Terry LeCount. Out goes Darren Nelson. Single setback. That's 23. Ted Brown. He's like a wide receiver. Ted Brown, a year ago, a gifted receiver for Minnesota. Works out of the backfield. Going out to LeCount. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. The gift, the thing the Bills have got to stop if they're to beat the Vikings is the pass game. Kramer's thrown the ball three times. Men have been open all three times and no pressure from the defensive line. I said that throw between 40 and 50, the way he's going, three plays, three passes, it could be 60. Well, Tommy Kramer missed two ball games last year and he broke his own record for a number of attempts. He also broke his season yardage record of over 3,900 yards. Two tight ends are now in for Minnesota. Bob Brewer's in there with Joe Sensor, number 81, second down and 10. That's Sensor in motion. This is Brown. Smothered over the left side defensively. It was Merlis getting there first, and then Isaiah Robertson was right with him. Minnesota, we've watched for so many years. That is the record on Monday Night Football. Interestingly enough, in the past three seasons, and I might add, since Francis Tarkenton retired, the Minnesota Vikings are 23 and 25. They were seven and nine three years ago, nine and seven winning the division two years ago. They were seven and nine last year. So over the past three years, even though it has been a winning 15 years for Bud Grant, they have been a losing team. It's third down and 11. Loss of a yard. The two setbacks are both in now. That's Brown in motion. Good protection for Tommy Kramer. Flag is down. Kramer wide open. Deep downfield is Nelson. And Steve Freeman was down there defensively for Minnesota. Keep in mind, a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Our referee tonight is Fred Wyant and his staff. Right there, an evidence of what Darren Nelson brings to this team. Exactly what they wanted. Tremendous deep threat coming out of the backfield. Excellent hands and at the same time, great run. The penalty is against the Vikings, of course, there. Buffalo declined the penalty, but Darren Nelson, Rashad tells me, is as quick as Joe Washington, but faster. They think he's the fastest running back in football today. Ray Coleman, 47-yard average in the Metrodome. He's died and gone to heaven up in Minnesota. He got off that frozen field. There's Mike Mosley dropping deep along with Robert Holt. Holt is 87, Mosley is 88. Both relatively young in the league. There were rookies a year ago, and neither one of them played. So we'll call them rookies tonight. Coleman angling. Short kick, looking for help, and the ball is in the air and loose. And falling on the football for Minnesota quickly was David Huffman hustling down there on the coverage, and Minnesota has it back inside the 25-yard line. Brother Buffalo now has the football. I am well, in the air on that. Jeff, you were right. It looked like Minnesota had it. And right at the last minute, the ball squirted out from the Minnesota man's hands and Buffalo recovered. That's Mosley losing it there. Now they bat it around for a while. <laughs> it is really being batted around. There's Huffman. Had it. Squirted it out. And getting on the football, Jim Hazlitt. So it'll be first down and 10, Buffalo at their 25-yard line when we come back. Magic, you full-size guys are going to have to live in a smaller world. Absolutely no problems here in a Buick. They've taken the luxury of the Electric Park Avenue and put it in that small, sporty Skyhawk. That's posh, all right. Yep, and everything's put together just right. Hey, Magic, can you really get in there? Like they say, shoot, everything fits beautifully. Including me. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? What's wrong with the computer? Tape drive. The Army's most technical skills are also the ones most in demand. But now, if you qualify, there's a way to reserve the skill you want up to 12 months before you go in. It's called the Delayed Entry Program, and it guarantees you the training you want. Be all that you can. Okay, it's up. In the army. Back at Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, just outside Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills with the football. First down and 10, the ball at their 25-yard line. Joe Ferguson, number 12. Of course, the quarterback, Curtis Brown, number 47, has been changed to take up the slack. 
from the missing Joe Cribbs. He plays the tailback. Going deep for Bramler, and since Tommy Hannon was back there, flag is down. And from the elation on the part of the Bills, it looks as though it may work against Minnesota. It may be a roughing penalty, uh, Jim. It's back in the area where the quarterback was throwing from. If it is, it's a 15-yarder. Moving it out to the 40-yard line, here's Fred Wyatt. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 77. First down. Mark Mullaney in late on Joe Ferguson. A team coached by Chuck Knox is invariably a stable team. You must not give them a succession of opportunities. Minnesota failed to pick up a fumble, and now this penalty. They're giving Buffalo opportunities to go. Ferguson looks it over. Roosevelt leaks 48. Curtis Brown, 47. Those are setbacks. Frank Lewis split to the right, Butler left, and this is Leaks. Up close to midfield. Crowd loves it. Gain of nine. It'll be second down to one. Matt Blair there defensively, as he has been for so many years. Let's take a look at that roughing call. Ferguson going deep downfield, looking for Bramer, friend. Look at the top of your screen. You'll see 77 Mullaney comes, and he hits him in the head. That is a no-no. You cannot hit that little bitty quarterback in the head, and that's a good rule. Yeah. You'll not have many little bitty quarterbacks around if they let them do it. Second and about a yard and a half. Curtis Brown, big opening. Brown inside the 35-yard line. Tommy Hannon made the save there, and a flag is down late again. Curtis Brown, as I mentioned, was moved from fullback to tailback. Joe Cribbs, still a holdout. We understand he's coming to Buffalo and hold a press conference here on Monday. You saw the indication face mask. That, again, will damage the Vikings. Gift the Vikings as we listen for the call. Face mask, number 45, first down. Tommy Haddon. The Vikings last week stopped the rush against Tampa Bay as good as they've done in two or three years. They gave up a lot of a lot of pass yards. But here's an end zone look here. You see the gaping hole in the middle. Dennis Johnson got a handout, and here comes Hannon, 45 from the side. We could see the face pass, but I'm sure he did. First down, 10, inside the 28-yard line of Buffalo. They started at their own 25. Another huge hole. The flag is down as Roosevelt Leaks is down to the 10-yard line. What you're seeing in Buffalo is one of the best offensive lines in the league. There's the call. It'll be against Buffalo. Holding, and it will work against Buffalo. It is a fine offensive line. They pass block so well for Ferguson. Low in the league for the past two years in sacking this man. They have really protected Ferguson over the past couple of seasons. There is the rest of that offensive unit. The receivers, the high skill technicians, if you will. There is the offensive line. Jones on the left, Devlin on the right. Two fine tackles. Borchardt, you saw him a while ago, number 73, with a fine block for Curtis Brown. First down and 20. Holding against the center, Will Grant. Ball inside the 38-yard line, and Ferguson will put it up on top. Going with the screen, Curtis Brown has McKenzie out front. Cuts back inside the 35, back to the 32 for about a six-yard pickup. Defensively, the second year now, the Vikes have worked out of a 3-4 defense. On a pass situation, they bring Randy Holloway in, and they bring in a whole bunch of defensive backs. Outside linebackers, they're good ones. Big Matt Blair on the left side. He's knocked down more passes over his nine-year career than you can count. He's 6'5". There's your secondary. Tommy Hannon getting off to a good start a week ago. And John Turner also had an interception. They had three last week. And their win over Tampa Bay, they only had 16 all of last year. They think they're getting more pressure. Second down, 15. Going out to Roosevelt Leaks, he drops the ball. And it'll be third down and long. Forshaw, whom you mentioned a moment ago, was the big surprise last year. And the Jets learned about him in the playoff game. In fact, they learned about the strength of that whole Buffalo offensive line in that playoff game, which was ultimately in a thriller won by Buffalo. Out comes Curtis Brown on third down and long. In comes Mike Mosley, a first-year man out of Texas A&M. Didn't play last year. Third-round draft pick. He's the third wide receiver. 
here Giff has got to look at getting field goal position more so than touchdown position. Out of the shotgun, as you can see. Rifling the ball is Ferguson, incomplete, intended for Mike Mosley, and out comes Nick Mickemeyer. This will just about be the full extent of his range, and now we look down, a flag is down again. This one deep in Buffalo's backfield. And obviously, it's going to be against Buffalo as they call in Matt Blair to discuss the options. Huge turnout tonight. Game is not sold out. Well, if he, if he kicks it, Frank, it, it's a 49-yard kick, but they're going to take the penalty. And that, of course, holding to number 72. Ken, Third down. Ken Jones holding. Of course, they take the penalty to move it out of any possible range for Nick Mickemeyer, but the down remains the same, so it's third down and 25. And Ferguson, as Brandon noted a moment ago, will be thinking field position for field goal. All he needs is about a 12 or 14-yard completion. He gets in pretty good shape for it. And the shotgun. Ferguson has the time. Fires to Lewis. Lewis jokes his way down inside the 25. They are short of the first, of course, but well within field goal range now for Nick Mickemeyer. Good call, good reception, and a very heady run on the part of Lewis. He was working his way back, trying to get inside and give Mickemeyer a straightaway shot. Now here's the difference in that penalty. The Vikings have not accepted the penalty. It's a 49-yard field goal. By accepting, it's now a 42-yard field goal. Calculated risk for the Vikings. Backfired. The center is Justin Cross. He's a rookie. Matt Robinson will place it down. Mickemeyer, who was 0 for 2 last week, will make the attempt. Mickemeyer is 0 for 3 as he misses from 43 yards out. He missed last week for 29 and 48. We saw a young man, Gary Anderson, Monday night at Buffalo let go, kick 3. When you live and work around the water, you put in some pretty long days. But you know, I guess that's what makes us really enjoy our nights. Best beer for the best time of the day, Miller High Life. Saturday Night Football Fever as Notre Dame lights up for the first time ever. Their hot opener against Michigan means special nighttime fireworks on NCAA College Football Saturday on ABC. You look at Chuck Knox, you have to wonder if he's beginning to wonder, did he make a mistake in not keeping Gary Anderson? Touch of frustration registered in his face, even at the moment. In defense, however, of the Bills, Chuck Knox, Gary Anderson was 0 for 5 in preseason. Who's to say? We can deal with pickers. First down and ten. Minnesota. Kramer handing off to Darren Nelson. Out to the right side, showing that almost unbelievable quickness. And Darren Nelson out over the 30-yard line for a gain of about six yards. Again, it's interesting what the Vikings are doing. That many times they're playing a pony backfield. Uh, Darren Nelson, who's not big. Danny Brown, who's not big. Both of them with great quickness. But both of them can run the ball as well as receive it. There's Darren Nelson, good-looking young man. You know, the interesting stat about him at Stanford, he was the first back ever in NCAA history to catch 50 passes and rush for over 1,000 yards. And he did it three times. 5'9", 185 pounds, but very strong. Second down and four. The ball for 30-yard line of Minnesota. Play action by Kramer. Sensor. Joe Sensor gets the first down at midfield. And there was a lot of concern on the part of the Vikings last week when Joe Sensor had to leave the game against Tampa Bay to have ribs x-rayed, but he obviously is all right tonight. 
All right, this is the play pass. He fakes the draw play, really to the halfback, off the eye, and he throws it downfield. There, Sensor, is he some kind of receiver? Not great speed, but great hands, good leaping ability. Okay, he was something last year. 79 receptions. First down and 10, just short of midfield. They've marked it. Kramer gets it into a crowd. Sensor had it for a moment, drops it incomplete. Gene Marv, the rookie from Saginaw Valley State, was helping defensively. He's filling the big shoes of Shane Nelson, the strong side inside linebacker who is in all probability lost for the season to Buffalo with knee injury. One of the interesting things about the way Knox builds a football team, he operates with, relatively speaking, limited resources. They don't get the big-name players from the big-name schools, and yet they're all solid. They synthesize. This team's a tribute to Chuck Knox as a coach. Quick deployment of wide receivers. Moving quickly, Ben Williams. But it will be procedure as Ben Williams was drawn offside by Minnesota. And he was drawn offside by number 76, Tim Irvin, the right tackle, who has replaced Ron Yeri, who was a fixture there for many, many years. Ron Yeri, of course, now with the Los Angeles Rams, by his own request, really. Yeah, he really said his time start, to go. Number 61. Wes Hamilton, right guard. Well, it wasn't Tim Irwin, was it? Well, either that or Fred Wyant was, just saw the movement, could not quite see the number. I thought it also was Irwin. Second down, 15. Ball just inside. Minnesota's 45-yard line. Darren Nelson now split out to the left. Minnesota will show you a few formations. Ted Brown, big opening. Look at Brown go. Almost keeps his feet. Gets close to a first down. I believe he has it inside the 40-yard line of Buffalo. Here is some football player. I'll tell you that. He's not only a good receiver, but look what he did on the ground on a team that really doesn't basically run the ball. We'll take a ground-level look at this, but, Fran, the thing that amuses me is, and you played for the man, most people think of Bud Grant as a conservative. In fact, he has the most diversified offense with the greatest number of offensive sets of any coach in the league. Drew? Well, what San Francisco got credit for this year, the short passing game and the genius offense Grant's been doing for six or seven years. First down, 10, inside the 49 line of Buffalo. No score in the ball game, which is just underway. It's from Buffalo, New York. Kramer, cutting back to the right. Isolating receivers, going deep, looking for Rashad. Rashad picked up, covered nicely by Charlie Rones. It'll be second down and 10. And Ahmad is, lift, is lipping over there. Yeah, he, it looked to me like he had a limp yep. as he crossed. He may have pulled yeah, yeah, a hamstring. He grabbed his hamstring. Yep, that yep. is a bad sign. You know, when he was running for the ball, it didn't look like it was an Ahmad Rashad going out for the ball. Wasn't that badly thrown, but Ahmad is hurt. Took himself right out of the game. Maybe fortuitous. Bud Grant picked up Sam McCollum. He's not in uniform tonight, at least by Seattle. Of course, in that controversy of last week before the start of the season. But he's not in uniform tonight. Leo Lewis is in, number 87 wide receiver, second and 10. Sammy White. Market short of the first down at the 30-yard line. Jeff Howard made a point about the multiple formations of the Vikings. What they're doing is lining up in one formation and shifting to a variety of formations and then snapping the ball quickly. They're trying not to give the defense a long look in order to call the defense against these formations. Pretty good strategy. Out goes Leo Lewis. And in comes some new folks. Bob Brewer, the Second tight end comes in. That stat's about to change. Right? Ricky Young, another fine receiver, is in. It's third down and less than a yard for a first. Well, all the formations confused the Vikings that time. <laughs> that stat of, what, 11? 11 times without, a, without converting a third down uh, attempt is really a hard thing to believe. We'll be back in just a minute. 
blow away the confusion about pickups with the new Chevy S10. Let's compare gas mileage. Toyota and Datsun can't match. S10's EPA gas mileage ratings. The imports don't offer an optional V6. S10 does. The new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. And now, during Chevy's truck sales drive, special incentives to dealers make possible savings of hundreds of dollars on new Chevy S10 and Love pickups plus full-size C and K 10 and 20 pickups. The American farmer feeds over 300 million people. But that's not enough. So electronics from a company called TRW are making farm equipment more productive. By the year 2000, there will be over a billion more people in the world. And the American farmer will help feed them. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. Two weeks from tonight, the very special one-hour premiere of Too Close for Comfort. It's coming! Back at Rich Stadium, third down and one for the Minnesota Vikings. The ball just short of Buffalo's 30-yard line, no score. 7.24 remaining in the first quarter. Short yardage offense. Tommy Kramer did not like his offense. He said a few moments ago, he used the Minnesota timeout. Play action, a third and short. Looking for Sensor. He was covered. Kramer... Put the ball in the air incomplete, but the flag is down. Ricky Young was downfield. Since it was the man Kramer wanted, heads up defense by Buffalo. They were not fooled at all. It looks like an interference call, Jeff. We have had a few flags tonight, man. A little bit sloppy in the first six minutes. We had Number five penalties. Number 34 stepped out of bounds, came back, and was the first to touch the ball. Loss of down, fourth down. Cannot do that. So they didn't make the one yard, and they didn't convert, and the statistic still holds. It's interesting, interesting decision time now, because Rick Danmeyer, the field goal kicker, is not a long kicker. Fairly accurate that he would be attempting a 47-yard field goal, and Bud Grant says no. On fourth down, he will go. He did this last week inside his own territory. If historically, he's gone for more fourth down plays out in the field than most any coach I've ever seen. This time, I believe they'll run. Ricky Young. Yes, very close, and the surge will carry him for the first down. Tony Galbraith, I might add, another fine running back from Minnesota, not in uniform tonight, one of four players declared out of uniform for tonight's action, along with Wade Wilson, quarterback, Jarvis Redwine, another running back, and, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Sam McCollum. First down and 10, Minnesota. The ball inside the 29-yard line of the Buffalo Bills. Sammy White splits right. Leo Lewis stays in the lineup. Ahmad Rashad. We will try and get a report. Went to the bench holding a hamstring. Kramer. And Leo Lewis, thinking it was going to be screened, was not paying much attention to Kramer. And Bill Simpson comes up with the interception and Bill Simpson what a great story he is he retired from football he didn't pass a physical a couple of years ago he was sitting around watching on television and they got a phone call and here he is well here's Kramer trying to throw a screen out in the flat to the left it was covered he then is going to an alter receiver Lewis Lewis doesn't look and Bill Simpson has made a lot of big plays in his career most of them in Los Angeles he made another one here in Buffalo when a Rashad goes out of the lineup, it hurts. Leo Lewis was thinking screen. He did not even look back at Kramer. We have a turnover. The biggest thrill of Atari at McDonald's is winning. 50 deluxe home computer and video centers, 200 Atari Centipede games, 1,200 Atari home computers, 10,000 Atari home video games, as well as millions of McDonald's food prizes. Purchase may be required to redeem food prizes. Just scratch the card and match two dots without getting zapped. Sometimes you win. Sometimes, because every card can be a winner. Taste the thrill of Atari. For 80 years, Buick has had what can only be called a love affair with the automobile. The result has been well-built, comfortable, prestigious cars. Right down to today's state-of-the-art Buick Century, with its superbly contemporary form and its remarkably luxurious environment. 80 years went into this century at Buick, where the love affair with the automobile isn't getting older, it's getting better. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick?
Buffalo has the football first and ten inside their own 15. Buffalo 1 and 0 in the young season. They beat Kansas City this past Sunday. And Minnesota beat Tampa Bay. There's the man who came up with a turnover, Bill Simpson. Played for Chuck Knox when Chuck Knox was the head coach of the Rams. On first down and ten, Roosevelt leaks. Had Curtis Brown out in front. Mark Mullaney takes him out of bounds, but not until Leeks had negotiated himself about eight yards. Well, there's a lot of emotion that has been inspired by the threat of a strike. Signs all over the stadium, as a matter of fact. Well, that's kind of a misnomer. The fans do want go on strike. Teachers strike, steel workers strike, policemen strike, firemen strike. That doesn't mean the players are right. Inside the 22-yard line. Second down, a long two for Buffalo. Curtis Brown, right side, close to a first down, dependent upon where they mark the ball. Going back to Bill Simpson, Frank, you're right. A great story. And an example of what I, we talked about with Don Monday. A productive player gets more out of himself than his physical abilities would seem to allow. Now it, there are some places that measure here for the first down. It's a little short. That much. There's some players that just have a feel for the game. They may not be able to run as fast or jump as high or be as strong, but they just have a feel for the game and they're in that right place and make those big plays. Simpson is certainly one of those. He's what the guys down the field call a player. <laughs> Would you believe Bob that? Uecker. That is not Bob Buecher. Take your mask off and show. You saw how much his third down. No score. Six minutes remaining in the first quarter. Buffalo and Minnesota. Brown, right side. First down easily behind the block of Joe Devlin and Borchardt on the right side of the offensive line. 80,000 plus. This game was not a sellout so the, earlier in the week, so it is blacked out here in the Buffalo area, and they have turned out. They were out in the parking lot tailgating from early afternoon on. They are talking proud. And proud the Buffalo offensive line is because they have taken control of the game in the early going here. They're whipping the defensive line of the Vikings and opening big holes. First and 10, Ferguson back, gets pressured, has to release it early. Intended there for Frank Lewis. Good pressure being applied there. Looked like Doug Martin Doug number 79, Martin. and he has improved his pass rush to move him from the right defensive end to the left defensive end. I don't know what that means, but he sure looked pretty good there. He's over in that strong side, and he is a big one. 260. He's good against the run, but as you say, he's also a fine pass rusher. It's a play pass. 79, Ferguson watch him. Got his back to him, and he levels it. No rough and call, shouldn't be. Second and long, they usually go to a 4-3 from the 3-4. They do. They bring in Randy Holloway, number 75. Second down and 10. Ferguson. And in and out of the hands of Roosevelt Leaks. A pair now that Leaks has dropped by Ferguson. Paul Rose is two for two. He's had two in his hands. He dropped them both, and that's tough. No Ferguson. Had eight different receivers in their win over Kansas City last week, 14 to 9. Like Tommy Kramer, he set a lot of club records of his own last year. Attempts, completions, yardage. He had 498 attempts. That's where the game has gone. Over 3,600 yards, over 250 completions. Third down, 10. Perry Tuttle, the rookie speedster from Clemson. The number one pick is in there. He wears number 81. Step to the right is Tuttle. Ferguson, however, goes back, tries to get Brown out of the backfield, incomplete. Buffalo will have to punt. Here's Curtis Brown trying to do the work that was performed by Joe Cribbs for the past two years. Joe Cribbs, of course, two more years on a contract, wanted to renegotiate. Of course, those rights reverted to the players when the contract 
expired July 15th. The only thing Joe Cribbs could do is accept an offer prior to July 15th. He did not do so. He is not here. But Cribbs, as we look at Eddie Payton, deep from Minnesota, provided over 2,200 yards rushing and caught over 90 passes in two years. He'll be missed. Greg Hayter hammers it. Payton with plenty of time. Looking for his picket line. He doesn't get it. Good defensive effort by the special unit for Buffalo. It'll be first down inside the 35-yard line for the Minnesota Vikings as Tommy Kramer gets ready to step back into the huddle. 4.48 remaining in the first quarter. We'll be back. for the best time of the day, Miller Highline. Bob and Sandy Davis needed two incomes to afford the home they wanted. Then tragedy struck. Allstate update. Joint mortgage protection. Sandy died before the mortgage was paid. Allstate Life's joint mortgage protection could have helped pay off their mortgage if either of them died for less than the price of two policies. But the Davises didn't have it. If you both work, talk to an Allstate agent for life, home, and auto. Put yourself in good hands. Back in Buffalo, first down and 10. The Minnesota Vikings have the ball, their own 34-yard line. Once again, Ahmad Rashad is not in the lineup. He still did not have a complete report, but he did leave the game, holding what appeared to be a pulled hamstring. Kramer trying to find Nelson out of the backfield, low and complete. It'll be second down and ten. I can understand Minnesota as you look at the graphics. Nelson in the lineup, how much better they are when he's out of the lineup. They, they really Speaking are. Speaking of Shane Nelson, of course. What? Look at the rush yards, Howard. When he's in the lineup, they give they give up 111 yards, and when he's out of the lineup, they give up 160 yards. He makes a big difference Absolutely. in their defensive football team. I can understand Minnesota throwing the ball on every play. I don't understand Buffalo having thrown as much when they were so successful on the ground. That's a good point. Ted Brown, single setback. Now they shift Brown. They have everyone in the pattern. Firing complete. Sammy White. Kramer right on target. Out to midfield. First down. Well, Kramer's getting time. He's getting people open. Their multiple formations are working. And here's a ground level look at old Sammy White coming out there running the breakout. There's the protection up front. There's Wes Hamilton. Here comes Sammy, number 85. He's got man on man coverage. That's never good enough to, to cover Sammy White. He makes the catch with plenty of room. It's first down. He said it earlier. He is a fine receiver. Ooh. Sammy White. Oh, never under 40 passes in the last six years. Last week, 22 yard touchdown pass in the win over Tampa Bay. And he's always there. Darren Nelson, the single setback on first down and 10. Sensor in motion. Looking downfield, delivering it a little too quickly to Leo Lewis, who, by the way, filling in for Rashad, offers Tommy Kramer only a five foot eight target. How yes. much does that affect the quarterback, Fran, a short receiver? I think of Al Jenkins, he sure doesn't hurt Barkowski. No. Uh, but when you used to throw into a shot at 6'2 or 6'3 and you go to a 5'7 receiver, it makes a lot of difference. You know, I sit here and I wonder why Buffalo even plays a three-man line, which is a run defense on first down. They like to go to their four-man on passing situation. Every down is a passing situation with Vikings. Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. And that's why they haven't even come close on a sack tonight because they've had a three-down line. But now they've got four. Vikings have only run the ball four times tonight. Second down and ten. Kramer. Looking deep for White, and this one just flat overthrown. It could have been six. Yes, he had it. White had his man. Kramer, Kramer had, had White and overthrown. Tommy Kramer is a tough, competitive, excellent quarterback. He is not sharp right now. He's missed a couple of passes. That was a possible touchdown pass. He had one earlier he could have hit that he normally would hit. But I'll tell you, he is some kind of competitor, and he'll be back. Third down and ten. Well, you're, you're 
the receivers have to be in some kind of condition <laughs> playing pro football today. Especially on this team. It was about the third consecutive fly for Sammy White. Darren Nelson now split left. Kramer has the time. Darren Nelson with a great catch. He has the first down, and he stayed in bounds in doing so. Rod Cush, defensive safety man. You'll see Rod Cush try to make a play on the ball. Here's Darren Nelson, a halfback playing wide receiver. Makes a good cut. Watch 42 try to get the ball. Couldn't quite get it. Hey, he's good a catch. Halfback Graham, as I pointed out earlier, he had three years of over 50 receptions while at Stanford. In the same three years, he was also rushing for over 1,000 yards. Going to be one of the superstars. No question about it. Has that kind of ability. 33-yard line of Buffalo. Still no score. Kramer hangs one high. Leo Lewis in the foot race, and the flag is down. Somebody was doing some nudging. Leo Lewis was battling Charles Jones to get deep. The way Isaiah's talking, it must be against Buffalo, but we'll see. <laughs> Isaiah's doing some heavy talking there. Bill Simpson is more pleading. Fred Wyant called into the huddle. Kramer indicating that it's going to go against Buffalo. The battle was between Lewis and Rome's. Rome's covering Lewis and is trying to get deep. White Frank. I didn't see it. This is Lewis. Lewis. Neither did I. But here goes Lewis. Let's watch it. That's Rome's. Yeah. Well, he was entitled to that. He's all right there so far. Let's see now. He cannot keep that man from the path of the football. I will it's tell you, explicit. my friends, that's a tough call to well, make there. It was called in the San Francisco Dallas game. Yep. A a tough call. NFC Championship also. First down and ten. Kramer. And complete, and a flag is down. Sammy White, intended receiver. Yep, I contend if they can make that kind of call on defensive pass interference, the defensive back has no chance to play defense. You're right, they have no chance. Motion on the part of Minnesota. That'll back them off five. You know, last week, Minnesota had a good balance between running and throwing. They actually ran the ball more gift than they threw it. This week, they're back to their old habits. Yep. Very point I was going to make. We're in the first quarter, 332 to go. Kramer has thrown 15 passes. And they've only run four 81. plays. <laughs> Illegal motion against Minnesota. But again, we might also point out that's not happenstance. That's all set up by frequency of defense. They just don't come in and start throwing all of a sudden. They plan it all week. They spread them out all over the field as you see them here, and they're going to throw again. Fred Brown, single setback, first down 15, the ball inside the 21. Kramer had Brown out there. The linebacker, Isaiah Robinson, had fallen, and Kramer overthrows. Buffalo loves the way Isaiah Robinson covers backs out of the backfield. He's got great quickness, and they will isolate him man on man with a, with a halfback. It's tough for a linebacker to do, but he does it as well as anybody. Interestingly, he's retained that quickness despite the many years in the league, and he's notable for his key intercepts and his ability to run with the ball when he does intercept. 3.28 remaining in the first quarter. There's no score. Third down, 15. Passing situation for Tommy Kramer, who's 5 of 16, 82 yards. Lots of run to the Again, it may have been procedure against Minnesota. Well, no. yes, I, uh, that I agree with. I misunderstood you. They induced it. They did, but you know what makes it tough? That offensive line was having to sit there for a long time while they go through their shifts and their formations. Very difficult to hold the points. Procedure. Minnesota. And again, Minnesota's right side. But we're not going to blame old Timmy Irwin this time. That's Sam McCollum. Procedure number 61, simulating the start of the play. You heard the call. That's Sam McCollum, who had been the Seattle player rep, who had been a starter last year, had started through the preseason games this year, was dropped. The union felt he was dropped because of his player rep activity during the course of the game. 
who will be interviewed. Sir Francis asking the key question. Second down and 20. Ball inside the 26-yard line. Ted Brown gets outside. Another flag is down. And now another flag is down downfield. <laughs> it's raining yellow flags out there as it has been all time. Night. Getting very sloppy. Also add part of that McCollum story was that they Seattle had just acquired Roger Carr. They say that is the reason that he was considered expendable. And of course, if you follow this game, you know that there was quite a rhubarb, particularly in the part of the Seattle players, and then throughout the entire league. As sensitivities are ever so touchy at this particular point in the strike crisis. The big one there, 15, must be personal foul. We have personal foul, illegal crackback, number 80. A leg going back. Terry LeCount, penalties on three successive downs. 5-5, five, five, now 15. It's second down, and let's count it off. 10, 20, 32. Nine penalties in the first quarter. Evidence of sloppy play. I don't mind, but clearly it upsets Frank. <laughs> Here's number You're taking 80. it personal. Here's number 80, Terry LeCount, cracking back, and that's a no-no, and it's a good no-no because many people lose their knees that way on defense. Exactly why they put the rule in. Second and 32, Kramer with the screen. Another flag is down as Brown works behind the screen. I tell you. We're never going to get went down deep downfield on the opposite side of the field. Becoming absurd. Totally away from the play. I don't think we'll ever get through the first quarter of this night, Howard. This time it's going to be against Buffalo. I really don't have a clue what that penalty could be about. Away from the... The totally. man who threw the flag was the furthest man from the action. But he saw something. Well, Monday night will be in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Jeff Nixon, I believe, was whom Fred Wyant singled out. And what that does, that's an automatic first yeah. down. So they went from a second down and 32 on this penalty to a first down and 10 at the 35-yard line of Buffalo. Was that some penalty? They could have had an offensive play that done that much I'm more. I'm beginning to agree with Frank. I'm getting irritated now. Five penalties on this possession by Minnesota. That was a five-yard penalty that resulted to a first down when they had, what, second and 30? <laughs> Those five penalties split up equally. Time, yeah, time out. <laughs> All right. This is your basic pro football. <laughs> I was looking out my window today watching some high school kids practice. Strike might help Kramer at this moment. That takes Minnesota down to one timeout. We have 315 remaining here in the first quarter. He's over to visit with Bud Grant. Always maintaining that cool, calm exterior. You really sometimes wonder <laughs> what's going on inside. Jeff, I think it's all cool inside, too. He, yeah. he, he really stays cool in every situation. 15 years, he's taken the bikes along with Fran, our colleague tonight, to the Super Bowl on four occasions. They won 11 Central Division titles. And here's the man that has to be missed so desperately by the Bills. He did it all for them. Did you see that sign, Frank? The Bills are big boys. They don't miss cribs, play on words, but totally illusory. Well, you have to miss somebody, as I mentioned earlier, that in two years gained over 2,200 yards and caught 92 footballs for you. And a big play man. Well, Bud, say something there. No, he's just listening. Listen to Sammy White now. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh, you're free with Sammy. <laughs> I really like well, that man. He's great. He really is. I get such a kick out of him. Baltimore still at it in baseball. Detroit, Boston nodded. Texas beating Minnesota. American League scores. I remember the Yankees, Frank. <laughs> First down and 10, Minnesota. Ted Brown out. Darren Nelson, the single setback. If you can call in a setback in this offense, this time they'll sweep right. 
the little one trying to get outside. He is stretched out. And it was Dean Marr who moved in behind the defense and stretched out the end run to make the stop. California tied with tough Toronto, Seattle leading Kansas City by one, Oakland and Chicago nothing. Mm. Mets leading Montreal, San Diego, San Francisco latest score. Aaron Nelson got a couple, it'll be second down and eight. And little girl looks a touch like Debbie Allen. Great night for football. Cool in the 50s. Ball just inside the 34 yard line. Ted Brown in motion. Tommy Kramer looking for Sammy White. And White was there, but he'll be out of bounds. What a kick by Sammy. Out of bounds or not, he really made some kick. Interesting on the way they moved their formation around. They had Teddy Brown, man on man against Isaiah deep down the field. Here's the end of the play. Here goes Sammy. And he really accelerates to get to this ball because it was way out in front of him. Here he goes. Good call by the official. Good no catch, question. But Not even out. close. So, and for Tommy Kramer, a third down and eight. Still the first quarter gift. 223, no score. And they need a short completion to get within Dan Myers' field goal range. This is not it. Ted Brown in motion. Kramer tries to drill one in. It's incomplete. Going for Darren Nelson. And Darren Nelson, Nelson picked up, covered nicely by Rod Cush. It'll be fourth down out of Van Meyer's range, I would say. You're right. Yep. Sir Francis, you were right earlier. So we'll Kramer see Greg is Coleman, not sharp tonight. The putter. Ray Coleman, who last year became increasingly more accurate in angling the ball out of bounds. In all probability, that will be his attempt from this position on the field. Robert Holt has dropped for Buffalo. There he is, number 87. He'll be guessing with Coleman, hoping that Coleman should slice it off his foot. He would have an opportunity for the return. Coleman looking to his left, hanging it up high, looking for the corner. He has a man down there to cover. I'll tell you, a beautiful kick. Greg Coleman. Puts it out at the four-yard line. And the Buffalo Bills start deep in their own territory with 2.09 remaining in the first quarter. This Saturday, by the way, on ABC Sports, first battle for the WBA Worldwide Heavyweight Championship as undefeated champion Michael Spinks defends against Johnny Davis. And in NCAA college football, it will be Michigan, Notre Dame, first night game ever from South Bend. Wide World of Sports, 5 o'clock Eastern time. And that, of course, once again, the WBA Worldwide Heavyweight Championship. And then college football. Live, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, and a special one-hour show preceding Wide World of Sports will cover Princess Grace's funeral. Two tight ends come in to the offense. The Bills deep in their own territory. Bramer and Barnett are in there for Buffalo at tight ends. This is Booker Moore. Booker Moore banged at the line of scrimmage. He might have got a yard out of it. Booker Moore, a first-round draft pick a year ago. Serious ailment, Dean Barre syndrome, suffered from it throughout the entire year, back and healthy. Was a 2,000 yard runner at Penn State. As a senior, he had 700 yards, and we are really glad to see this youngster back in action. There was a lot of question whether he would ever play again. Dean Barre syndrome, of course, a rare nerve disease. And he is healthy and he's back. Second down and nine. From the end zone, Ferguson in and out of the hands of Mark Bramer, incomplete. It'll be third down and nine. You know, the, the Buffalo offense has been on the sideline so long, it seemed like maybe 20 or 30 minutes that they should have taken a couple laps around the field to get loose for this series. The plain truth is that these coming in are two quality teams. Look at those figures. Pretty sad. And yet, neither one is playing at all well. Neither offense has really got any continuity whatsoever. And somebody just came in the Viking huddle and, and ran into somebody and knocked him over. <laughs> Which is a good evidence. Quick count. That's a safety. And we're going to have a safety. Fumble. Booker Moore fumbles in the end zone. If he fumbles out of the end zone, it's a safety. As it appeared that he did. Sa yes, indeed. It will be a safety. First score of the ball game. 
Booker Moore, the youngster, should never have tried to get outside on that. Well, he was going to be in trouble. He should have slashed and hoped he could get back over the yeah. goal line. I think it was Scott Studwell who made the stop. Well, this is not just second guessing, but how in the world from the four yard line do you why do you pitch the ball back? to the goal line in the first place. You're trying to get out of there. Watch this. He's going to pitch the ball out. The Never man is did. one yard or at and least to the goal line. Mullaney forces it deep, and Mullaney is there for the stop. Just Knocking not the ball loose. And that could have been recovered for a touchdown, but it gets right outside, right there. I'll never understand how that happens in pro football. In the Oakland Mets title game in December of 68 at Shea, that's exactly what Darryl LaMonica did. Went back. In the Jets Buffalo playoff game last year, that's exactly what Joe Walton called when the Jets were down inside the one. And it happened back Multiple in Multiple ball handling play and throw back. And, and it happened. never do it. And it happened back in 1941 when the Redskins were playing the Bears and Sammy Ball did it too. And I saw it. In 38. You're old three. enough. <laughs> you can remember. <laughs> Following the safety, of course. Buffalo must put the ball in play from their own 20 yard line. They cannot use a tee, so you will see Greg Cater in to put it in play. Eddie Payton has dropped for Minnesota. That came as close as you're going to come to being a Minnesota touchdown as you're going to see. Did you get a new stance? Cater gets a fine kick. It turns over and takes Eddie Payton inside his 25 yard line. Peyton just motors right up the middle. Good return out over the 45 to the 46 yard line. Good field position for Minnesota. 104 remaining now in the first quarter. Now if Tommy Kramer and company can get the wheels on. Well, yeah, they've had the opportunities. They've had great field position all night. They haven't put the ball in the end zone. They've had people open. They've had no pressure. Look at those stats. There. It's not a Tommy Kramer stat. He's he has completed two consecutively, Fran. Not two consecutive. First and ten. There you go. Ted Brown finds an opening. And behind Wes Hamilton and Dennis Scully, Bill Simpson made the stop from his free safety position. But Ted Brown picks up a quick eight yards. The Vikings are just the reverse of everybody else. They try to establish the pass so they can just run occasionally. <laughs> All right, up to a point. Tommy White and Leo Lewis up at the top of your screen. And here comes Ted Brown. And he is a, inside the 40 for a first down. And Buffalo has been thinking past the defensive linemen have been thinking rush the passer. All of a sudden, they've been faced with two consecutive runs. And they've been successful. As we head to the end of the first quarter, a lengthy one indeed. Minnesota on top, two to nothing, as a result of the safety forced by Mark Mullaney. And it'll be first and ten when we come back to Rich Stadium. Stay with us. If you run a small business, profits can get squeezed when inventory doesn't match up with production. What can help is a visit to an IBM personal computer dealer. Once you've explained the kind of help you need, a computer expert will show you the system that's right for you, show you how simple it is to get started, and how IBM's easy-to-follow instructions and library of business and management software can help you solve your problems and give you a tool for modern times. The IBM Personal Computer. Not only can it help you plan ahead, it'll balance your books and give you more time to make dough. And the cost? That's the icing on the cake. Your own IBM Personal Computer. Try it at a store near you. If you want it. I like it. If you really like it. I really like it. We can help you get it. I want it. Looking for value? 
It's here at your GM dealer. So pick out your new GM car, truck, and get GMAC financing at rates that make good sense. If you really want it, we can help you get it. We're GMAC financing. We got it. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell, Fran Tarkenton watching a very long first quarter in which Buffalo attempted seven passes, Minnesota 18, there were 10 penalties. So if you thought it was long, it was indeed long. First down and 10, Minnesota, they have the ball. 39 yard line of Buffalo, they lead two to nothing, a Mark Mullaney safety. Kramer back to the air, trying to go deep. He was trying to get to Leo Lewis and Leo Lewis was Ran right into Steve Freeman down deep. Once again, Leo Lewis in there replacing Ahmad Rashad, who left the game holding what appeared to be some sort of a damage to his hamstring. Again, no pass rush at all from the Bills. Last year, they sacked the passer 47 times. That's big. Last week, they sacked the passer in Kansas City, against Kansas City, three times. Tonight, they haven't even gotten close. Second down and 10. Barry LeCount split up to the top of your screen. Sammy White, Leo Lewis to Tommy Kramer's right. There's White. Kramer gets the screen to Brown. They'll have some blockers in front of it. But how quickly the pursuit will catch Ted Brown. There will be a loss of about nine yards. Rod Cush made the stop. First quarter numbers. Minnesota, big edge first down. Snow edge relatively rushing yards. The edge in passing yards, total yards. One turnover, the bikes, time of possession. Edge to the bikes, but a shabbily played first quarter with only a safety in the score. And again, a questionable call, a pitch out in your own end zone to a rookie who had, is playing, has played so little. Played a few players last week. Speaking of Booker Moore. It's not the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> Third down, 19. <laughs> Why are you chuckling? Uh, Howard phone home. Sammy White. He gets the first down inside the 25, close to the 22. Bill Simpson, Steve Freeman, providing the coverage. He split them. Well, they found holes in the defensive secondary. You'll, you'll have a replay here where you watch Kramer from the back here go back, so up in the pocket. Again, no pressure forever. He stands there. Goes it right down the middle, break into White. A lot of people around him, but nobody close. Well, Minnesota on the prowl once again. 22-yard line of Buffalo. If they get no more pressure than that, there's not a quarterback in football that will eat you alive. Kramer's one of the better ones. White is left. Leo Lewis right. Gain of 24 on that completion. Simpson, the big tight end in motion. Kramer dumps it off. This is Bob Brewer. And Brewer in the end zone. Heads up play by Tommy Kramer. Really he was almost sacked on the line of scrimmage. Got out of it. Started to run. Saw Bob Brewer, his second tight end, and promptly delivered. Now that's Tommy Kramer. You know, so many quarterbacks, when they run out of the pocket, they do, they lose the vision of the field. Pr Kramer does it. He's going to elude Williams here. He almost goes over the line of scrimmage, knows he's close, bounces back, throws to Brewer. At six. Steve Bills will hold for the placement attempt. Rick Danmeyer on. This is within his range. And Minnesota, very quickly, has moved out on top. They lead nine to nothing. A safety. And now the touchdown, it was Kramer to Brewer. Beer for the best time of the day. Miller High Life. 
Owens Corning Fiberglass announces a $10 rebate on pink insulation. And none too soon, because old man winter is coming with all those high fuel bills. Don't take it. Roll out an extra fuel-saving layer of pink insulation in your attic and get $10 back from Owens Corning, too. But hurry, the Put Your House in the Pink rebate ends September 26th. Back in Rich Stadium, we're in the second quarter, 12.56 remaining. Kramer has now put the ball in the air 22 times. Howard, you were way under with your speculation of 40 to 50. <laughs> he might go for a Viking record, which is 62. Might be 100. <laughs> Even Francis did not put it in the air that frequently. That's for sure. Dan Meyer. And this will be Mike Mosley. Mosley, very tentative, gets out over the 20-yard line to the 23. Keith Nord down there defensively. Three times they've met. And the Vikes have won all three, but the Bills have never led at any time in those games. And that's interesting. They're keeping their slate clean tonight. Well, this is an important series for the Bills because if they don't get something going, they could get out of this game in a hurry. You happen to be right, but they will get something going. They should go back to what they were doing at the start of the game. Hit the middle. First and ten. 23-yard line. Roosevelt <laughs> leaks. See what I mean? <laughs> like I said. Getting the command from on high. <laughs> like I said, they've closed the gap. Don't go for the middle. Instead, throw the ball. Do some reverses. Run wide. Well, the Vikes think they're going to throw the ball because they're putting in uh, the pass rush team for defensive linemen. Second down and 10. Leak stopped right at the line of scrimmage. That was a dirty chuck. That was. But if they stop the run like that, you know they can be able to throw the ball, Howard, so that's all right. Frank Lewis split to the left. Jerry Butler out to the right. <laughs> Ferguson dropped the football, and he finally gets on it. But not until he's driven all the way back close to the 15-yard line. <laughs> Apropos. Well, you got all the answers. Sometimes you just don't understand the questions. Well, Buffalo is, I would say, struggling. Now, that was a mess up in the exchange between the center and quarterback. Now, people think that's an automatic exchange. It isn't. I see that fumble happen uh, a lot, even in professional football. Loss of six, third down, 16. Out of the shotgun. Ferguson chased out of the pocket. First it was Mark Mullaney. Crowds him out of the pocket, and then it was Doug Martin. Crowds booing, and Buffalo does look simply dreadful. Some of those we don't need crib signs will come down. And I'll tell you, Minnesota, in all probability, is going to have excellent field position as Greg Cater, not noted for his length of punting, will be kicking from his own end zone. Well, both teams have been a little lethargic. The Buffalo is going to fire up the Vikes here because the Vikes now have a chance to have a big lead. Eddie Payton, you saw him making sure there were 11. Flags are everywhere. Ah. <laughs> ah. That was fun. not a good kick. Off the side of Cater's foot. This is a very, this is a very important penalty. If it's, a, if it's against Buffalo, the Vikings have got the ball at the Buffalo 32-yard line. That's where they have marked it. It's a rare day when you see a Chuck Knox team look like this. Well, it's it against, against Buffalo. Against Buffalo. Go, they will decline that penalty. And I think they have marked it at the 37. Illegal motion, left guard, decline, first down. And that has been marked. Just about the 37-yard line. Now they set it down on the 38. Bad kick on the part of Greg Cater. An error by Buffalo, declined by Minnesota. They have great field position. We'll be back. Chevy's out to blow away the confusion about pickups. 
with the new Chevy S10. Let's compare mileage. Ford's late entry small truck can't beat. S10's EPA gas mileage ratings. They don't offer an optional V6. S10 does. The new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. And now, during Chevy's truck sales drive, special incentives to dealers make possible savings of hundreds of dollars on new Chevy S10 and Love pickups, plus full-size C and K 10 and 20 pickups. When I do a job, I do it like a pro with my Home Light 330. Kickback is eliminated thanks to the advanced Raker 3 chain and safety tip device. And vibration isolation helps tame its big 3.3 cubic inch engine. The Home Light 330. It's not only nice to have around the house, it's the only way to build one. We cut the wood. We mow the lawn. We clear the snow. Nobody does a job around the home or farm like Home Light Jacobson. Undefeated Michael Spinks, he's knocked out all four challengers to his WBA World Light Heavyweight Throne. Will fourth ranked Johnny Davis be next? Don't miss ABC's Wide World of Sports live Saturday. And it as you see from that statistic there, the first down for Minnesota, 12 pass plays, three run plays, but it continues on second and third down. Minnesota likes to throw the football. There's no balance in their offense at all, but they don't mean for it to be balanced in their offense. They want to throw the football. Not against Buffalo tonight so far. Bills look simply dreadful. Minnesota at the 38-yard line of Buffalo. Minnesota leading 9 to nothing. 10.58 remaining in the first half. Ted Brown. Big hole, left side. It's about six. It'll be second down and four. They do throw so much on first down. When they do run, it is indeed a surprise play. And it's effective for them. They run pretty good on first down. Minnesota continuing to use their backs, rotating Darren Nelson into the lineup. They really plan this year on not using Ted Brown as much as they did last year, and rightfully so. They have Ricky Young. Tony Galbraith did not dress because of an ankle tonight, but he has been in great shape, looked well in training camp. So they have four strong backs, so they're not going to wear Ted Brown out this year. Second down and four. Sensor in motion. Complete. And Sammy White steps out of bounds for the first down of the 23-yard line. Rome's covering, but way off Sammy White with the deep threat. And again, by spreading the players all out over the field, they're getting man-on-man -man coverage for Sammy White. That's what they want to do. If they can create a man-on-man -man situation, Sammy will get open, and they can deliver the ball to him. He's having a big night so far. More than that, Kramer's beginning to get his yep. touch. He's getting a little rhythm in there. And sure uh, in comes Ricky Young, number 34. A setback to Ted Brown. Ricky Young, also a fine receiver, as you must be with the Minnesota Vikings here in the 80s. Kramer, Watch great out. catch, Sammy White inside the five. It'll be first down goal to go. They're really just chewing them yep. up now. Well, that time, Buffalo came with a blitz. One of the first times we've seen a blitz tonight. Watch Sammy, man on man. Makes a good inside move. He's yeah. interfered with there. Not a bad throw by Kramer. Good throw, in fact. White makes the catch. We have nine minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first half. Sammy White has already caught six passes for 104 yeah. yards. Amazing. 16.8 average per catch. That isn't bad, Sammy. Yeah, they got the big boys in. They might run from here, Frank. There's down goal to go. Play action. Why run when you can do this? Bob Brewer, his second touchdown. That's pretty. That's pretty, Tommy. Not pretty for Mr. Ralph Wilson on the other side of the arena and for the 80,000 plus people who are here. Not at all pretty. Up here it is. He's going to fake a slant play to the right to Teddy Brown. Then go back to the left. Hey, even a good head fake to the right. And there's old Brewer wide open. He doesn't get to play much of Sensor in the game, but he plays in the goal line all the time and makes some big catches for him. From Dan Meyer, Cato State, where you yeah. used to train. Dan Meyer for the conversion. Bills gets it down. Dan Meyer gets it through. Sixteen to nothing now. Minnesota Bruce says everything. Out on doesn't top. it? Eighty thousand Bills fans. They're not liking what they're watching. There is only one success: to be able to spend your life in your own way. You can open up your
your world and make it shine. You can do it. You can squeeze that extra something out of life. Yes, you can. You can set a goal, then do it. Add your own style to it. It's your world. It's your life. It's your time. Every minute, you can do it. Every day, yes, you can. You can grow in your own way. You can do it. And we like to help. You can do it. to adventure on the premiere of the Gold Monkey Wednesday. <laughs> well, I get right. my friend talking to it, along with E.T. Another hour it goes out <laughs> here in <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> Dan Meyer to put it into play. Mike Mosley, number 88, is back there, along with Hope, number 87, a pair of youngsters. This is Mosley. A rookie from Texas A&M. Came up a year ago but didn't play, and he gets off to the 30-yard line. Now, Buffalo will attempt to get something happening. They have had little or no success offensively, and, and they have not been too scintillating defensively. Jeff, you may give you something positive from the Buffalo side. It's happened so quickly, they got plenty of time to get back in the game. They're not really out of it at all. They got over two and a half quarters of football left, and if they get a couple of big plays somewhere in here, they get a little mo as our friend Dandy would say, going on their side, they'll be back in the ball game and have a chance. So Bob it. Brewer, he's caught nine passes in, thus far this season and last year. Five of them were for touchdowns. On first and ten, Curtis Brown, right side. He's piled up there. Doug Martin in there with John Turner, defensively for Minnesota. Shockingly poor performance well, for the Buffalo team. Buffalo ran early, cannot run now. They have not really had a good, impressive pass completion down the field. Joe Ferguson needs to have that to loosen up his team to get something going against the defense. And he's going to try that right now, I'm sure. Remember the versatility of Prince, his ability as a receiver. Second down, 10, Mike Mosley. End of the lineup as a wide receiver now for Buffalo, number 88. That's Mosley you saw shifting into the wing position, bottom of the screen. Complete. All right. Goes to the tight end, Bramer. Bramer. Ahead for a first down. Over the 40-yard line. And one first down is enough to stir this crowd. Well, I'll tell you, that's a big completion. They are struggling. A first down, a completed pass. Sometimes it's just a hard thing to come by. And you need it so bad, and they got it. And that should loosen them up a little bit. You got it, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Ball just over the 40-yard line of Buffalo. Jerry Butler now split to the left. <laughs> Getting it in to Roosevelt Leaks. Leaks will get five yards out of it. It'll be second down. No, no, he, he dropped the ball. Now incomplete. Now, Giff, I know Rosie's trying as hard as anybody. That's three out of three. He's dropped. he's dropped three. And I know he doesn't like it. If he doesn't like it, think of Chuck Knox. If he doesn't like it, think of poor old Joe Ferguson who's do it. Well, there you are. A bit of difference, isn't it? 34 yards to 152 yards, only five attempts to 25 attempts for Kramer. 30 attempts between the two quarterbacks. Eight minutes remaining in the first half. Second and ten, Mosley in motion. Ferguson, a lot of time. This time, Leakes handles it. And just pulls forward, probably out of total frustration, picking up the first down. Dennis Johnson made the stop. Still, the Buffalo offense is a little herky-jerky. they not quite in the flow of things yet. What do you hear from Jerry Butler? I haven't heard from Jerry Butler so far tonight. Have you? It's not a rumble. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Made a key catch for them last week and a touchdown drive just before the half. Oh, he's simply sensational. Here he is, wide to the near lower part of his screen. Hey! 
Ferguson. Roosevelt leaks four for five. Brother, this is now Buster Barnett. Ferguson has had a lot of them to his credit dropped. He has had a lot dropped, and he's he's staying very conservative. He has not thrown a ball that I remember to either wide receiver. We talked no. about Butler, but no, he threw to yes, Frank Lewis. Yes, he threw to Frank Lewis. But he's got you know, his two best Frank receivers to him are twice. outside guys. They're great threats. He's going to keep throwing the leaks until he gets it right. Or leaks does. One or the other. Second and 10, 48 yard line of Minnesota. Minnesota on top, 16 to nothing. Pair of touchdown passes to Brewer, the tight end for Tommy Kramer, and a safety by Mark Mulaney. Ferguson. Curtis Brown, one man screen. Flag is down as Brown is down with yardage for the first down. But again, the flag is down. A good guess would be something on the offense in the form of an illegal block. Holding. Buffalo will be backed up. That would be an illegal block of some sort, wouldn't it, Howard? Yeah. Give us a moment, too, to wish Hillary Cosell the very best on her marriage to Patrick Turner. Coming up this Saturday, we'll be there with bells on. We do wish them well. And how are you not losing a daughter? You're gaining a son. I understand. <laughs> I'm the one who's nervous. I'm yeah. You're walking down the aisle, I presume. <laughs> exactly. I don't think I'll be able to do it. With don't forget to lift the veil before you give her a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I blew that in my only chance. I know. I saw you. Second down and 20. Whittington in. Art Whittington. After four seasons of Oakland, acquired by waivers in August. He wears number Whoa, 21. Watch out. Screen. Bramer. And Bramer. Here's the roar of the 80,000, and he fumbles the football. Minnesota's saying they've got it. Nope. But Chris was he down? He no, did. they say it was down. Well, guys, I saw y'all cover uh, Pittsburgh-Dallas the other night. Dallas did essentially the same kind of play. Rolled way out to the right. You watch old Ferguson here. Take the handoff and then roll forever to the right side of the field. Now, while he's doing this, a screen set up the other side. Throws it across the field. There it is. Three blockers. No great. The best executed play of the night. Excellent on the part of Ferguson. He never looked back even to take a peek. Well, they ruled that he was down. Whistle had blown before he'd given up the ball. But in fact, very close. He wasn't. First down 10, 36 yard line, Buffalo trailing 16 to nothing on the move. Art Whittington. And he gives up the football. There's another scramble. This time, I don't think there's a question. Dennis Johnson was the Viking linebacker that really popped Art Whittington. Now Minnesota has the football. No, they don't miss it was Brady. Tommy Hannon. Well, here's the handoff. Trap play. Here's Whittington. Following Big Rich and McKenzie. Gets tackled from the side. Dennis Tommy Johnson Hannon. pulls it out. Tommy Hannon with the recovery and another Buffalo Bill effort is wanted. It'll be first and 10 Minnesota, their own 33 when we come back. No little cinnamon gum freshens breath longer than Big Red. So kiss a little longer, sing a little longer, laugh a little longer, longer with Big Red. That Big Red freshness lasts right through it. Your fresh breath goes on. When you hear what we're about to say, you'll see why we have to put a time limit on it. Buick is making available cash incentives of $700 to $900 on front-wheel drive Century and Skyhawk. If you've been waiting for that one offer that really makes sense, this is it. A closeout price plus a cash incentive of up to $900. This year closeout is really special with possible cash incentives of up to $900. This is the offer of the year at your favorite Buick deal. Don't miss it. 16 to nothing in the Buffalo Bills. Art Whittington has just turned it over to Minnesota. First down, 10. The ball resting just over the 33-yard line. Draw play going back against the grain. 
Ted Brown making the effort. He gets out over the 35, close to the 37, giving three. It'll be second down and seven. A little sprint draw action, Giff. Kramer fakes like he's going to roll out. The back moves a few steps. He stops and he hands back uh, to him. He runs the opposite way. Not bad. 38 yards, six carries, six three average. The leading rusher with 56 yards a week ago against Tampa Bay. Also the leading receiver. That's nothing new for Ted Brown. On second and seven. Kramer gets it in to Sammy White, who's having himself a night. Gets the first down out over the 45 to the 47. Jeff Nixon made the stop defensively for Buffalo. Way Sammy's going, he may set a personal record before this night is over. With Rashad out. Yep. He's, only, he's got seven catches already tonight. From 80, Groveling University. 80,000 almost done. Buffalo Bills fans. I was waiting for Frank at the Grambling station, but the train didn't stop. No one flagged it down. Play action by Kramer once again. Trying to go downfield, and he connects deep downfield. Oh, you got it. Sammy White once again inside the 35-yard line. Well, eight receptions now for Sammy White. Yeah, everybody here knows the Vikings are going to pass first, second, and third down. Buffalo still is in a run defense on first and second down. They're playing a three-man line. Why? I have no clue. Neither do I. But they're getting no pass rush at all, and they're supposedly to be a good pass rushing team. 80,000 people, national television audience, the home team shockingly inept. Minnesota started this drive at their own 33. Not getting to turnover. Here comes Ted Brown on first down. Good defensive play. Brown upended by Charles Rose for a loss. It'll be second down at 11. Terry LeCount checks into the Minnesota lineup. A lot of personnel on this former team of yours. You take a kid like Terry LeCount. Not a regular, but good enough to have won almost single-handedly the game against San Diego last year. He had himself a game. Six receptions, 120 yards, two touchdowns. Minnesota beating San Diego. Last November in overtime. Inside handoff. Ted Brown inside the 30. It's a quick six yards. Coming up at halftime, if we get there, the great <laughs> moment for Monday Night Football. <laughs> and a look ahead to a really outstanding September and October schedule. Well, here we are, third and five gift. You think they'll run or throw? <laughs> I'm very excited about either prospect. Is there any doubt what they're going to do? Darren Nelson back in the lineup. That's Nelson in the wing spot, along with Sammy White, who wears number 20. Kramer. Sensor and Sensor gets the first down yardage, but a flag is down at the 20. Jeff Nixon defensively there. But the big tight end was wide open. Well, he stays on the carpet for a moment at least. Shaken up with Simpson last week against Tampa Bay. Yep. Through ribs. Yep. Do you think they called an offensive pick here? Could have been. Referee Fred White. Backing the Vikings up. Here's his call. Pass interference, number 23. Could well have been Ted Brown. Yep, so they're both on the same side. It's like a basketball pick. You can't do it. I'm going to pause five seconds to allow our stations to identify themselves. WJLA-TV, serving the district, Maryland, and Virginia. Rich Stadium, the Vikings, playing against, thus far, a very inept Bills team. They lead 16 to nothing with 2.33 remaining in the first half. Kramer out of the shotgun on third down 15. Oh, fires it. 
It'll be short of the first down. Is caught there by little Leo Lewis. Short of the first down by about a yard and a half. And we will see Dan Meyer on fourth down. Dan Meyer, one of two last week. He missed the 42 yards and he made 30, a 33 yarder. Well, this is a 42 yarder for a gift, and uh, his he, best ever career is 47 yards. Yeah. He's at his best inside the 10. <laughs> one of the last of a fading straightaway kickers. Not many of them left. He's got it. Right through the upright. Nice. It's a 43 yard field goal by Rick Danmeyer. And a little murmur by the crowd. You hear the scattering of a few boos. Very nice kick by Danmeyer. It was. And as bad as Buffalo has played this first half, if they could get a touchdown on the board before halftime, they got two minutes and 21 seconds to do it. They're very much alive and in this ball game. They can be an explosive team if you've followed them over the years. Group of happy faces, Frank. They need to get the ball outside. They need to get it to Lewis. They need it to get it to Butler. They can score from anywhere on the field. So far, they've been unsuccessful. They are hungry for a Super Bowl. They made the playoffs the last two years when Chuck Knox came in in 78. He inherited a 3 and 11 team. He took them to five and nine that very first year after trading OJ for a slew of draft picks. Then they were seven and nine, and in the past two seasons they've gone to the playoffs, losing last year to Cincinnati 28-21 in the divisional playoffs. And I'll tell you this: this team has no chance to get this to any Super Bowl without Bill Quinn. With him, it'll be a struggle, but without him, I think it's impossible. Anmeyer will kick off. Mike Mosley, 88; Robert Holt, 87. They're deep for Buffalo. They don't have to be too deep. Dan Meyer doesn't kick along. Let's kick it high, however. This is Mosley. And Mosley works his way out over the 30-yard line, close to the 31. For one brief flashing instant, it appeared he had a chance to break. Hattie, we would have gotten you your touchdown, Francis. They need some kind of a big play, which they have not had at all tonight. I'm still the looking for Jerry Butler. Would give them a tremendous lift. How about as you tough. indicated, Fran, if they could get something on yep. the scoreboard before they go into the locker room. We have 212 remaining in the half. Buffalo down 19 to nothing. If they're going to do that, they've got to get the ball to their outside receivers. From the shotgun. Kramer at the tight end. Kramer held short of the first down for the 39 yard line, and we'll get the two minute warning. Kramer taken there by Kurt Knopf, who's in there as part of the prevent defense. Two-minute warning. Both benches alerted as if they did not know. We'll be back in a moment. Ed, it's time to take the rabbits to the pet store. I think I'll rent a trailer. A lot of folks call Jartran when their business expands faster than expected. Ed, I think we'll have to get a truck. You see, most Jartran trucks have automatic transmission and they all have a low price. Ed, I think I'll need a bigger truck. So when you need a truck for your business Ed. or your family, just call your Jartran dealer, and he'll hop right to it. Introducing the camera. Come on to Dad. So easy to use, it lets you picture life. You can do it. That's it. Come on now. As quickly as it happens, this unique film disc and the new Kodak disc camera with automatic advance let you take a picture every half second. Come to Dad. For a moment this precious, you need a camera this fast. The new Kodak disc camera. Red Stadium, Orchard Park, just on the suburbs, or a suburb of Buffalo, if you will. Buffalo has the football. They have a second down of two. The ball near their own 39-yard line. Buffalo has three timeouts remaining, while Minnesota used up a pair of theirs. They have one. But they have a commanding 19 to nothing lead. Very important for Buffalo to put something on the scoreboard. They haven't even given it a threat thus far in this game. Minnesota in the four-down lineman position. 
Curtis Brown covers up the football, tries to find a surprise opening inside. It's out over the 40-yard line, but short of the first down. Short of a first down, and they're going back to the huddle. Now he's going to use a timeout. This is not vintage two-minute offense of the National Football League. Well, I guess he figured I've got so many of them, I might as well expend one of them. You never have too many. The strategy being played out on both sides of the field. And we'll pause and be back with more action after this message from the National Football League. What happens to the child nobody wants? As they grow older, their chances for adoption grow slimmer. He's Joe Sensor of the Minnesota Vikings. He knows how these children feel. As a child, he lost one of his parents and was in an orphanage for six years. I can uh, feel what some of these kids are feeling. I know what it feels like when, when sometimes you don't feel loved and you don't feel cared. And it's a very hurt feeling. Today, as a United Way volunteer, he knows there are 437 United Ways in Minnesota making funds available to help these children through foster care and adoption. Uh, it's a sad thing to see these kids. Uh, it's not their fault that they're in situations like this, and we, we hope that people realize that and, uh, and help us help them. Let's give every child our love and understanding. Let's give the United Way. That announcement brought to you by the National Football League and the Minnesota Vikings, Vikings Joe Simpson. Well, Giff, I would imagine they would run here to try to get the first down, even though they're in a two-minute offense. They third down. That's the one. They'll have had, of course, two plays called in the huddle. They'll make the attempt for the first down, which they pick up nicely with Roosevelt Leach. There'll be no huddle. You Scott called them well on the stop. I, I believe they're the going huddle. back into the huddle, though. I don't either. I don't understand. Meanwhile, it. the seconds are ticking away. Gary Butler brought a play in. He now splits to the left, bottom of your screen. Frank Lewis put to the right. Flag is down. The Vikings are offside. Ferguson yeah. throws behind Harry Tuttle, the uh, the receiver, the rookie from Clemson. Incomplete. But again, the flag is down at the line of scrimmage. And that will stop the clock for Buffalo, give them a five-yard gain. Gets the bike. 115 remaining in the half. Well, he looks stoic. He always is. Offside defense. First down. Now, Buffalo's got some firepower now. They've got their rookie wide receiver, Perry Tuttle from Clemson. Jerry Butler from Clemson out there. And Frank Lewis. Three burners. Look yeah, at that Perry Tuttle can fly. Oh. He's been clocked in 4-4. He had 52 receptions last year for Clemson, the national championship team. 53 as a junior. Yeah. Made a fine catch last week on a touchdown drive. He's in the lineup now. He wears 81. First down, five. No. And <laughs> Butler was, I think, the intended receiver. He was knocked off within that five-yard zone, and he didn't continue running. Well, Joe, I don't know what you're talking about. They got two guys on your... He receiver. was complaining that Butler That's was hit exactly. beyond the five-yard You're right. limit. That's exactly what he might well have was been. complaining to the official about. He may be right. He may be. It's Butler now. And there's he's Willie Teal. Can only hit him. That's one. Inside no, five that's yards. all right. That that's one twice. Is, that's not all right. That's twice. He's got a point, but... Frank Lewis, split right, Butler's to the left. From the shotgun on second and five. And Can he make it out? Close to a nope. first down. Bramer. Blocky Hodges. First down, it. Buffalo, inside one minute. Seconds ticking away. Buffalo still with two timeouts. Ferguson chased out of the pocket. Oh, fires, and oh. he really oh. almost had this one picked off. Ferguson made a great move to the outside, and then he had the whole field in front of him. No pressure at all. Could have taken as much time as he wanted, and he almost threw a strike to the Vikings. Jim. John Swain in there on the prevent. Just couldn't hold on to it. You hear them booing the kid. How quickly they forget. 
Remember two years ago in the playoffs, the unending courage with which he played with a damaged leg against San Diego. And the week before that. That's true. The 49ers. Just a tough kid. Unfortunately, the fans don't care about courage. They just want completions and touchdowns. <laughs> that's true. Second down and 10. 41 seconds. Remaining in the half. Ferguson. Mosley. Mosley short of the first down at the 32 yard line. And now it should be a timeout. Now Ferguson will use one of his two remaining timeouts. And he will be confronted with a third down and about two. He moves over to the sidelines. Let's keep you abreast of what's going on in the world of baseball. Sick him, Howard. The birds are still at it. Detroit over Boston. Texas beat Minnesota. California, Toronto tied in the ninth. Seattle, Kansas City tied in the fifth. Oakland leading Chicago in the fourth. Mets clubbing Montreal. Big loss for Montreal at this point. Ferguson over conferring with the coaching staff. They're of course, talking it over with the coaches upstairs. I'm sure the Vikings defensively came in this game trying to shut out Butler and Lewis on the outside. And if that's what they were trying to do, they've done a pretty good job of doing it because Ferguson has been forced to throw his back or his tight end the entire night. And Ken Jones, the fine offensive left tackle for Buffalo, has limped off the field. He's been replaced by Justin Cross, basically a rookie out of Western State College out in Colorado. Injured reserve a year ago, but he's in there. And Jones and Devlin, the two tackles for Buffalo, are fine pass blockers for Ferguson. Well, Gibb, we're, here we have a third down, third and one. Now he's got to make a first down, but he's got two downs to do it. I would look for him still to throw it. From the shotgun. Mosley has the first down, wisely out of bounds, preserving the one remaining timeout, killing the clock, and Buffalo is inside the 21 of Minnesota. Well, now they can at least get a field goal out of the half because they're in Mickamaya's range. That they are, but they've got a good chance here to get a touch, but they've got at least four chances for four more plays at the 20-yard line. That's an average of five yards a play. That's and as inept as they have been up until this drive, Buffalo with a touchdown. And seven points would be well back in the ball game. They trail at the moment, 19 to nothing. 25 seconds. A hook and two remaining in the half. Looking for the six to Butler. A oh. flag is down, and we might have pass interference. Yep, you sure Tommy might. Hannon came down with the ball, but double coverage on Butler. And yes, we're going to get pass interference. That'll help Buffalo. I don't understand why Joe Ferguson is, is throwing into the double coverage. There's if, Willie Teal covering Butler up yep. close. And then you're going to see a safety man come over to help out, and they're doubling him all the way. They cannot Pass be doubling all the receivers. Number 37, first down. Oh, that's two close ones on Willie Teal. That one, he apparently was using the elbow more than he should have. Certainly was not preventing Butler a path to the no. ball, because that was a zig out pattern. Where is that call when he doesn't have a chance to catch the ball? No penalty. I don't think he had much of a chance to catch that, that ball. In any event, first down, goal to go. 19 seconds remain in the half. One time out for Buffalo. And one would suspect we'll still, still see the ball in the air. Yes, got to. This crowd is on its feet. Ferguson firing yes. in the end yes. zone. Frank Lewis touchdown. And Some kind of move. Yeah. Crowd loves it. And beautiful timing by Lewis. He broke to the outside. The defender went with him. He Came curled right in. around and Ferguson drilled it in there. It was a great move by Frank Lewis, 35 year, 35 year old veteran. Ferguson made a great watch Lewis. He's going to make an out move that you won't believe on John Turner. Look at this. Takes about four or five steps. Turner's got to go with him. Cur curls back around. Ferguson had the patience in order to stay in there, wait for the move, and hit it. Good and throw by Ferguson. Veteran move by Lewis. He did not rush it. Turner had to buy it. 
Nick Mickemeyer for the conversion. We've got a new football game. That, my friends, was a very big series for the Bills. Gives us the look of a ball game at the very least. 22 years of experience combining there. Ferguson in his 10th year, Lewis in his 12th. Here's Ferguson again going back to the shotgun. They say Lewis has never been better in his career. He had his biggest year last year. He's had a great preseason. And watch him here. He does it again. Just count seven points, though. Last year, setting a Buffalo Bills reception record of 70. And yardage, over 1,200 yards. Scored a touchdown last week in Buffalo's win over Kansas City. And the crowd is back with the Bills. Yep, and the Bills are very much back in the football game. Capricious nature of the football fan. Eh? Fourteen seconds remaining. Reminder: halftime will relive one of the great moments. There have been so many in our 13 years of Monday Night Football. Also, take a look down the road to some excitement that's coming up your way. So stick around. Stay with us. We're going to cover this from the end zone. Eddie Payton is deep. You're looking at Nick Mickemeyer, and you'll see it the way Eddie Payton would see it. And now Mickemeyer drills it along the ground. Taken there by the Vikings. Neil Elshire. Elshire was shocked. That football bounded into his arms. Tommy Kramer back out. He has 11 seconds, one timeout. I do not believe we'll see anything terribly fancy with a 19 to 7 lead. But for Buffalo, that will have to give them a tremendous lift. Well, the Vikings are going to put three wide receivers out to the right, and he's going to throw the ball up and try to get a tip. Looking for a defensive foul. There he goes. Well, he was. That was not the gun ending the half. Almost picked off. Terry LeCount was down there, and Mario Clark went up for it. Couldn't hold it. We have one second now on the scoreboard clock. I've always wondered, Fran, have you ever gotten over that prayerful pass of scorebacks? The true Pearson? Yeah. No. I've never gotten over it. I remember you quarreling with the official and trying to wreak oh. some order out of what was total chaos. Not in Fran. That's right. You never quarreled with officials, did you, Francis? I never said anything but complimentary things to the officials. That's in a great moment you will be seeing for Monday Night Football over a 13-year period. Well, the one you'll see, actually, this is the very date that yep. it took place eight it years ago. Eighth anniversary, same ballpark. That's all we'll tell you. 31 yard line, Minnesota, one second. And we'll be in halftime. Ted Brown, right side, working on statistics. Running. <laughs> Getting to midfield as time expires. Steve Freeman dropping in there. Uh, Bud Grant, lead his troops into the locker room. Chuck Knox will take his boys in. Stick around for our halftime activity, Michael, wherever you may be. Van Meyer will get it underway. Buffalo has Mike Mosley deep along with Bob Holt. And this will be Mosley from the six-yard line. And down goes Mosley inside the 20, hustling down there. Steve Jordan out of Grambling. That's Tommy Kramer, and look at his stats. So vastly improved. At one point, he was 5 out of 18. Now he's 14 out of 29, 196 yards, two TDs, only one intercept. Yes, he was getting his touch. In the beginning, he didn't have it. But he's you had could see big, it coming. He's had his big days. He had five 300-yard games a year ago. Had one over 440 yards. As I mentioned earlier, troubled by personal problems a year ago. Much publicized, but he also had a pair of damaged knees that he played almost the entire season with. First down and 10, Buffalo. Ferguson comes out winging. Is on, oh, but he is there and he comes down with it, and there is a flag. 
Jerry Butler working against Willie Teal, who's really being exercised tonight by Buffalo. I've been waiting all game for that. Nobody can cover Butler one-on-one. -on -one. Well, this was a situation where he had pretty good coverage on him. The ball was underthrown, which was a good throw by Ferguson. Butler came back, made the catch. He got the interference call. Makes no difference. And it does look as though it will be against Willie Teal. Pass interference. He made it number 37. First down. That's three calls against Willie Teal. Let's right. watch again. Hey, Butler's isolated on Willie Teal. Second year defensive back. Teal doesn't have bad position, but he has good position. The ball you'll see will be a little bit underthrown, and he'll come back for it. Teal didn't react as fast as Butler. The offense has an advantage there. He gets the call plus the reception. Big point. 47 yard pickup. And Willie Teal using that left elbow twice now has been caught. The ball just inside the 35-yard line. Buffalo trailing, as we mentioned, 19 to 7. We're just on the way here in the second half. And a big play for Buffalo. Ferguson will go down. Scott Studwell on the blitz was there, but the pressure came really from Mark Mullaney. Mullaney, as Fran mentioned earlier, has switched over, works on the right side. He's probably the quickest of the pass rushes. Meanwhile, they've taken Doug Martin, the stronger defensive lineman. They put him over the left side. Interestingly. Mike Lynn was talking potential trade for Mullaney, but he wouldn't give him up. With whom? With the Los Angeles Raiders. To elaborate on that statistic, they also led the NFL the year before that. They do protect their quarterback, Joe Ferguson. So that was one of the rare sacks, and it cost the Bills nine yards. Second down, 19. On a thing, a completion. Uh, Butler, and he's at the 35-yard line, short of the first down. Yeah, but now they found him. I kept looking for Jerry Mumphrey in the fourth game of the World <laughs> Series last year. Well, you've got to get to your so-called skilled people. Butler is the epitome of skill. Exactly. And that's a strong arm. That's All a good arm. Stay in the air a long way. Good throw. Talking about the offensive line of the bill. They have allowed the fewer sacks as you look at Jerry Butler in the last two years. The Vikings have not had a good pass rush for the last two years. But the entire night tonight, the Vikings have put pretty good pressure on Ferguson. Third down and five. Willie Teal has been worked on by all the Buffalo receivers tonight. Knows me in motion. Ferguson in trouble again, but finds right. the relief foul. Roosevelt leaks. And leads inside the 20 to the 18-yard line, and the crowd has really come alive. Why not? The game has come alive. That is a major league play by Ferguson. A lot of pressure could have easily been sacked. Did not lose his poise. Watch him here. You see the pressure come as he's looking to his right to find the receiver. There's Martin. There's Holloway. There's Duck White. Dumps it out, and he didn't drop this one. Roosevelt leaks. Makes the first down at the 18-yard line. Opening drive by Buffalo. Remember, just before the end of the first half, they went 69 yards for their one and only score. They fail 19 to 7. Battling to get back in it. Flag is down. You saw the Viking offside. Ferguson goes down in the arms of Fred McNeil, but I do believe the penalty will work against Minnesota. Well, you had a Viking offside, and then they threw another flag because Frank Lewis jumped at the flanker back position. It could be offsetting penalties. We'll see. Penalty against Minnesota will offset the sack of Ferguson. And Matt Blair is out there arguing with an official over exactly what you mentioned, friend. Yep. Uh-oh, we got a flag here. We could have an unsportsmanlike conduct. The official threw his white cap. Now, what's yep. that mean? That means unsportsmanlike conduct. He could. I think they're charging Matt. Matt Blair is really exercised at this point. He could draw another one. The officials are getting tougher on that. It used to be you could say most anything to him. Stunwell is involved too. Offside, 79. Now we're going to have. And now we're going to attack it on. They're attacking it on. That's right, Giff. Half the distance, and I think it's exactly what you said, Giff. I think you probably will get Matt Blair with some unkind words. Unsportsmanlike, number 59, 
First down. There will be no discussion of the official's ancestry. <laughs> That's a new rule, right? First down, goal to go. All right. Inside the seven-yard line. Jeff Knox looking on. He watched almost an entire first half of the ineptness on the part of the Bills. And now they're right back in it. Curtis Brown staying on his feet inside the five to the four-yard line. It'll be second down goal to go. He had nothing. Curtis Brown made whatever he got. Good, tough running, but it's tough down there. There are not many big holes when you get inside the five-yard line. Curtis Brown, Roosevelt League seeing most of the action. They mentioned that Bill Cribbs, of course, several times is not with the team. The Bills did acquire Ted McKnight just a few days ago, who had three big years with Kansas City. He was, he was around a year ago. Roland Hooks has a fractured elbow. He's unavailable. And the fourth round draft pick, Van Williams, is also injured. If, if he's going to throw, this is the down to do it. Second and goal. Play action. Ferguson, all the time in the world. Fired into the crowd. Willie Teal could have picked it off that pass intended for Buster Barnett. I'll tell you, that is just excellent defense. Ferguson good made a good fake. He uh, had plenty of time. Nobody was open. Third down goal. Buffalo right. needs this. Back in goes Jerry Button. Well, instead of playing against the run inside the five, on third and four, you've got to play the pass. The Vikings are putting in defensive backs, taking out linebackers. The Bills are taking out tight ends and putting in wide receivers. Frank Lewis, top of your screen. Butler goes left. The tight end, Mark Bramer, put to Ferguson's right. Watch the tight end on the back. Either one. Butler. How about Butler? There it is. A waste time. Beautiful shot by Ferguson. Speedy pattern. Just a slicing diagonal by Jerry Butler. And all Butler did from the time he lined up is beat double coverage. And Butler can beat double coverage. Great quickness. Jerry Butler. Watch him here. You see Teal on him. There's a safety man in the background. He's got him too. But then nobody has him. Butler makes some kind of move. Ferguson throws a strike. And a Willie Teal is the man they are working on tonight. Huh. They're chewing him up like Pittsburgh chewed up Dennis Thing. Same thing. Nick Mickemeyer for the conversion. And the Bills. He missed it. Missed the conversion. Just hooking it with Nick Mickemeyer. And a very important conversion it is indeed. Instead of trailing by five, the Bills now trail by a pair of field goals. Six points. Goes the best when you dress for success. Anything goes with hush puppies. What goes so right when you're out for the night? Anything goes with hush puppies. What shoes do you choose? We'll give you some clues. Anything goes with goes. hush puppies. Dress them up, you can dress them down. They can go to the country, they can go to the town. They're nice to your feet and they're kind to your toes. And anything goes with hush puppies. Hey, look at this. Dotson's lowest price truck sticker price only $58.58. I know. Now the famous Dotson Little Hustler is sticker priced at just $58.58. I know. Dotson's lowest price truck is the Little Hustler. Fully equipped, sticker priced only $58.58. More good news. To help you get an even better deal, Dotson is now giving its dealers special cash incentives. Act now. The touchdown. Following that, Nick Mickemeyer missed the conversion. The Bills trail by six. We're in the third quarter, 12-16 remaining. There is Eddie Payton. Dangerous return, man. Nicomaya missed the conversion, and I keep thinking of Gary Anderson. I wonder if Chuck Knox is. Well, but it we saw it. Eddie Payton run for two of those kick returns when he played for Detroit in 77. He did it against Bud Grant's Minnesota Vikings. This will not be Eddie Payton. This is Keith Nord. And Nord works his way out over the 25 to the 27-yard line, and we will see Minnesota in possession there. If I was about to say, Gary Anderson's big night put a lot of pressure on Mickemeyer. 
He watched the game last Monday night. He knew people were saying, well, maybe they should have kept Anderson instead of Mickamar. Here's the touchdown from Ferguson. Has a little pressure. He stays in, throws a strike. Butler scores again. I agree with that, Fran, but how much pressure can there be on a conversion? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I never tried one. Frank did. First and ten, Minnesota. 27-yard line. A sensor in motion, the big tight end, and a gifted one indeed. Wide open is Sammy White, who was just ripping up that secondary tonight. Wide open is Sammy White, and I hate to be redundant, Howard. Yes, but the Buffalo Bills continue to play against the run on first down with a three-man line. As you see, a nice little Sammy White just running a quick out ball. Look at him cut. He can cut full speed. He's beautiful. Ninth reception, 114 yards, another 141 yards. With a shot on the bench, Sammy White taking up the slack. 37-yard line, first down, Minnesota. Aaron Nelson, the rookie from Stanford, to the 40-yard line. Gain of a couple of the second down and eight. Irvin Parker, the strong side outside linebacker, made the stop. Ten of the most receptions Sammy has ever had in the regular season. He's verging on it. Give that a ball. You threw those to him, Brand, back in 76. I did. Second down and eight. <laughs> well, they're having trouble lining up here. Well, they were getting Nelson. Had to be off the line of uh, scrimmage, and that's one of the problems. You spread people all over the field. You have right. to have a certain amount on the line of scrimmage. Others have to be in the backfield, and Darren Nelson was up in the line of scrimmage. Kramer had to tell him to get back, but then he did not have time to get the playoff. Minnesota, as they did in the first half, wasted time out. We'll be back in a moment. I want to quit. I want to travel. I want to dream. Most men dream the impossible dream. Down of eight, the Minnesota Vikings at their own 40-yard line. Buffalo took their first possession. And for a touchdown, the score. 19 to 13, Minnesota over Buffalo. Ted Brown, single setback, LeCount. Third wide receiver for Minnesota, split to the right. Ted Brown on the draw, and he's in a whole lot of trouble as Fred Smith. Oh, no, no. Hammers him to the turf. They'll bring that back, of course. That's Ken Johnson getting a little <laughs> exercise into the end zone. All right, Ken. Ken. Slam that ball now, Ken. But. Yeah, that Merlis one. handling Ted Brown like a rag doll. He's a load, isn't he? Mm. You remember the popular term a year ago since Merlis was involved? The Bermuda Triangle. Yep. Smerlis, Hazlitt, and Shane Nelson. And Frank ex explained at the outset of the game what the loss of Shane Nelson means to Buffalo. You know, that play was, it. It was interesting, Giff. It was obvious that Kramer called an audible. That was the call he wanted, and they lose three yards or two. Smurlis pretty heady. Pro Bowl the last couple of years. He might have picked up on the audible also. Third and long for Kramer. Kramer. Oh, Sammy. Sammy White. Okay. Ties his record. Ten. Kramer now 11 of his last 12. They're saying now that they delay did not the get the ball off on time. Before the 30-second clock had expired, there will uh. be a delay of the game. Tommy Kramer up there arguing. He was looking right in the end zone at the clock. That is a futile <laughs> argument. Now, boys, in the last three plays, you've, <laughs> you've had a delay of the game. You've had them had to take time out because they couldn't get lined up properly. I, I love it when Bud gets that look of utter disgust. <laughs> so rather than a first down at the 48-yard line, Minnesota has a third down and 15 at their own 32. I think I would try to put somebody on Sammy White if I was on the defense. <laughs> get a couple of folks on him if I yeah, could. Or maybe three or four. So Tommy is 10 of his last 11. He's got a lot Sammy. Of time and Sammy White He's is down there again. This one he does not hold on. A pass that could have been caught. Great time for Tommy Kramer. I watched Sammy White from the time he broke the line of scrimmage. He ran a beautiful pattern. He had single coverage. He beat his man by 10 yards. Tommy waited a little late. And by the time the ball got there, Sammy had some company. Here he goes. He really wanted to throw when he pumped it. 
Look at Sammy White break, break away here, wide open. But the ball was a little underthrown, and they get help, and they break it up. Fourth down, Greg Coleman on the punt. Mosley is back there, number 88, with Robert Holt, as I mentioned. Basically a pair of rookies, even though, though they came up last year. Both have missed the season. Holt from Baylor, Mosley, Texas A&M. One could have been blocked. Coleman gets it off, rushes it, kicks it high. Fair catch call for and made far downfield by Mike Mosley. So good field position once again for Buffalo. I'll tell you, that was as close to a block as you could see without it being blocked. It was. That was Rod Cush, who's number 42, who came in and almost blocked the punt. Uh, Buffalo, they scored in their first possession here in the second half. Their last of the first half, they have it again. From imagination and engineering comes a whole new generation of Zenith System 3 television. The sharpest picture Zenith has ever created. Remote control convenience that puts over 100 broadcast and cable channel capability at your fingertips. And handsome new contemporary cabinet designs. New Zenith System 3, part of the new generation from Zenith, where the quality goes in before the name goes on. Introducing the new five-speed Datsun Turbo ZX, the official pace car of Caesars Palace Grand Prix, an awesome new entry in the winning Z-Car tradition. Its turbo performance, plus the added response of a five-speed stick, shift into awesome with the new five-speed Datsun Turbo ZX. See it at your Datsun dealer and at the exciting Caesars Palace Grand Prix, September 24th through 26th. Sunday, September 26th. Get ready for a two-hour premiere of Matt Houston. They're alive and well in Orchard Park, Rich Stadium, suburb Buffalo, New York. They're talking proud again. Why? Their team is coming back from 19 to nothing to 1913. The Gipper picks up the action. First down, 10. 33-yard line. Jerry Butler playing a major role in the Bills' comeback as all of a sudden Joe Ferguson starting to find number 80. Roosevelt Leakes intended receiver underthrown, covered well by John Turner. Well, what the Vikings are doing is very simple. They're using double coverage on both outside receivers, and they're trying to make Ferguson throw to his tight end or his two backs. That'll be second down and 10. That's our view as we have a camera sneaking a peek over our shoulder. Hi, Mom. We work our way around the post here in the booth. He had leaks all <laughs> along. <laughs> Just underthrew him terribly. Lewis is right. Copy your screen. Butler is flip left. Ferguson drops. This one almost picked off. Mark Bramer was there and Matt Blair had a big ball on it. Well, I, what's happening, the Vikings are putting a lot of pressure on Ferguson. He's having to throw off his back foot. If you throw off your back foot, you don't complete many passes. That one was behind Bramer and big Matt Blair almost had his 16th career interception. He's always around the football. What I'm saying, Howard, is Joe needs more protection. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. I remember you saying and keep his game when Matt Flair was a rookie. This kid will become one of the greatest. And he has. That time you were right. Very seldom am I right, but I was that time. <laughs> Mosley in motion for the Bills on third and ten. And incomplete. Mosley intended receiver off his outstretched hand. And it'll be fourth down and Buffalo. Now that was Brings a big their punting unit. Sorry, Gift. That was a big series, and they and Buffalo failed. That may cost them their momentum. It was. And that time Ferguson had adequate time. He just didn't hit the receiver. The receiver was open and he overthrew him. There's Eddie Payton. He positions himself at his own 25-yard line, awaiting the punt of Greg Cater. And I would say they might be coming after this, Gift. They got a lot of people up there. Got it dropping off. Gator, slow getting it off. Peyton, that indicated the fair catch, and he executes at the 36-yard line. 31-yard punt. 
high by Greg Cater. For Minnesota, relatively good field position, and we'll be back with more action in a moment. In television presents, you make the call. On fourth down from the Miami three, Terry Bradshaw is hit at the two and fumbles into the end zone where a teammate recovers. Now you make the call. Is it a touchdown? Here's an easy question for you. Which of these games is the closest thing to the real thing? A, in television, Major League Baseball. B, Atari Baseball. Here they are again, close up. A, in television. B, Atari. If you thought A, in television, you're absolutely correct. You see, I told you this question was easy. What call did you make? On fourth down, only the player who fumbled can recover for the offense. Instead of a touchdown, it's Miami's ball at the two. 31-yard punt by Greg Cater. Minnesota has the football. They have a six-point lead. 19 to 13. 9.42 remaining in the third quarter. First and 10. The Vikings at their own 36-yard line. Hamer. And sliding out to make the reception was number 80, Terry LeCount. And Terry LeCount was running on a strong safety, Steve Freeman. He's not used to covering those outside receivers, and he gives him a lot of room. Watch it here. Kramer again. Plenty of protection. Good vision downfield. You'll see nobody's even near LeCount. There he goes. Ball resting right at midfield, first and ten. LeCount, strip to the right. Out to the left is Sammy White along with Leo Lewis. Ted Brown pecks along in the middle, finds nothing Watch happening, out. gets to the outside. Watch out. Ted Brown with a nice run, designed to go up the middle, nothing doing, step to the outside, gets the first down. That was Close a heavy piece of work. Line. Heavy piece of work, Fred. It really was, because the play was designed to go up the middle. Watch here, it's going to be all jammed up as a trap up the middle. He stutter steps, comes to the outside, he's got speed enough to do this. He gets a little help from the count, and off to the races he goes. Minnesota coming right back here in the third quarter. 23-yard pickup. Ricky Young, 34, is in for the Vikings. It's set back. Kramer, all the time in the world, dumps it off to Joe Sensor. And Sensor picked up there very nicely by the rookie Gene Marr about a second on Valley State, filling in for Shane Nelson. Jeff, one thing we haven't talked about tonight. Here in the third quarter, there's a lot of wind out here. The Vikings have the wind at their back. That is a great advantage. And this caused the field position the Vikings have now. The short punt the Buffalo had. The wind blew the ball back. There was a gain of three by Sensor. It's second down and seven. Ball at the 24-yard line. Kramer, play action. Trying to go deep, trying to hit Darren Nelson. Good coverage back there. Not fooled at all, Charlie Rones. How much do you know, Fran, about Saginaw Valley State? I know quite a lot, Howard. Why don't you tell us about it? <laughs> well, that kid Gene Moore, the rookie from there, who's replacing Shane Nelson, is a pretty darn good-looking rookie. He's been in a lot of plays today. Minnesota on the night, 34 pass attempts, 15 rushing attempts, third down and seven. And this will be 35 <laughs> pass attempts right here. Blitz, this was on, and Kramer was able to get rid of it, but it's ruled incomplete. Isaiah Robertson puts the heat on Tommy. He oh, did he? Off. Good play by, by Isaiah. Oh, did he? Watch it here from the end zone. You'll see from the right of Kramer as he goes back to pass. You'll see Isaiah come through. Nobody picked him up except for Kramer. And the quarterback isn't supposed to pick up with some linebackers. And Sammy White almost makes another great play. Well, well now, 42 Rich. yard attempt by Rick Danmeyer. Big kick for well, Danmeyer and the Vikes. And he's hey. got the wind behind him. He's all right. And it's good. For Minnesota. Stretches a six-point lead to a nine-point. A look at Rich Stadium. 
here in Buffalo. Jam packed. Yep, I know they didn't want to. Buffalo didn't want to pick, uh, give up three points, but a touchdown would have been devastating. In this. I want to remind you this Saturday, right here on ABC, a battle between the WBA World Light Heavyweight Michael Sphinx against Johnny Davis, and then college football at its finest, Michigan. We'll play Notre Dame in South Bend. That's the first time they've ever played a night game there. They just need wide world of sports, 5 o'clock Eastern time. NCAA college football at 9 o'clock Eastern time that night. And a special one-hour show preceding wide world of sports covering Princess of Grace and funeral. Rick Danmeyer. Put it back in play, and the two youngsters, Mike Mosley and Robert Holt, drop for the Bills. Mosley 88, Holt 87. Lou Pacone might well be back there, a veteran Buffalo Bill, but he's been sidelined with Cruz Ritz. A good kick for Danmeyer, high into the goal line. This is Mosley. Spinning out of bounds. Near the 21 yard line as Keith Nord was hustling down there very quickly. Joe no Ferguson. Now let's see if Final they can. Second instructions. See if they can strike back, Jeff. Well, they got to go against a pretty stiff wind right now. It's not easy throwing into this wind as, as much as it is right now, but they got to do it. And yet they scored both their touchdowns into the wind going this way. Ferguson brings them up. Lifts it over. It's a 21 yard line. Minnesota, four down linemen. Screen, and a flag is down as Roosevelt Leach turns up field. Pass complete to Leach. It's a flag down. Flags in the backfield. You know what that means. Yep. That will work against Buffalo. That is not just a 10 yard penalty, that is a 20 yard penalty. The 10 or 12 that they gain and the 10 that you lose. Right. Preliminary indication, an illegal use of hands. Fred Wyant, our referee tonight with his crew. You know, you really don't normally see that penalty on the screen pass. You kind of want to What saying is you shouldn't see it on a screen pass. Oh, does that hurt. Oh, illegal use of the hands, number 73, first down. Borchard, the right guard. You see Reggie McKenzie <laughs> eyeing up the official. That's a that's a rare call because you really don't need to block the defensive lineman. You want them to bite them in, to rush the quarterback so you can get the screen off. I'm sure I've seen that call before on the screen pass, but I don't remember when. At the 11 yard line for the Bills. First down and 20. 7 11. You may be here in the third quarter. Roosevelt Leach spots an open oh. over the left side. Tried to get back to it. He was hammered instantly by Scott Studwell. I'll tell you, when they first got Studwell, Fran was still with the club. He was a lower round draft choice. Yep. Nobody paid much attention to him. They found out he was as big a hitter as they had. Well, that, they got him in the ninth round because everyone thought he was too slow at Illinois. There's old Scott Dillican, young man. But that was a big hole that time. The only guy that could step in the hole to stop the play was Stud. And he did it. There's a gain of a couple. Let's call it second down and 17. Fired and it's complete. Gary Butler gets to the 20 yard line. Back close to the original line of scrimmage as Matt Blair made the stop. Pretty smart quarterback in by Ferguson, not trying to pick it up on one play. He's just nibbling away to get in position to make a 10 yard play on third down to pick up a first down. That comes from experience, my friend. And in comes Perry Tuttle, the rookie receiver from Clemson, the first round draft pick. Pick Tuttle with the superior speed. Mike Mosley's in there. Jerry Butler's in there. So we have four wide receivers for the Bills. What you said is true, Fran, but this is a critical down again. Got to do it here. Diving catch, and that's the youngster know. we've been talking about. I think he'd be short of the first down, but a fine catch by Perry Tuttle, working against the Willie Teal. Going to be close. And Keith Nord, number 49, almost had an interception. Pretty dangerous play. 
It is going to be short, I think. But I, I think you're right. I think the play was intended to go to Butler. He was bumped pretty much out of the play inside the five-yard area, and then he had oh. to go to Tuck. Look at this, Alfred. Is that tempting to go for or not? I'm sure he I will. Go for it. I go for it. Period. He's down by nine points. Well, the reason you go for it also, if you kick with the kicking into that wind, they haven't kicked well into the wind, you're going to give the Vikings excellent field position anyway. Ferguson stays on the field, so fourth down. Inches to go, 5.33 in the third quarter. Buffalo down by nine. They'll go. Wouldn't you go for it? I would go for it. Make it or not make no, it, I'm I would go for it. Thinking what Fran has referred to several times is the fourth quarter, they're going to have the wind behind their back. And they are going to be so much more effective. Their percentage works in their favor. The only thing, the air is a major one if they don't. Long count. The offsides. We got to get it. Curtis Brown. Second effort. Right side. First down, Buffalo. So, proper decision. <laughs> well, the strength in this football team, talking about Buffalo, is their offensive line. They put them to the test right there. They showed their quality. Chuck Knox, five years as head coach with the Rams, won the division each and every year. That wasn't enough out there. First and ten. 33-yard line of the Bills. Draw play to Brown once again, and Brown finds an opening, and he can make a lot out of nothing. He gets out close to the 40-yard line. Gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. You know, the temperature is dropping so much there, Howard, it could snow any moment. I knew you were shivering for a reason. <laughs> Getting down into the low 50s, I would suspect. Why don't you borrow Frank's jacket? Just out a warm Frank's sweater tonight. My yellow plastic beautiful blazer. <laughs> Leaks with a huge hole, and look at Leaks battle. Leaks inside Minnesota territory to the 44-yard line. Like I said, hit the middle. Well, that's the kind of holes they were getting during the first, the first quarter. quarter. They got away from it and, and lost that momentum of that running game. Watch this. That offensive line's coming off the ball. You see the blocks here. They're subtle being blocked out. Leaks just has a big hole to run through, breaks some tackles. Willie Teal, Matt Blair. Everybody's trying to pile on and, and one get way or out. another Willie Teal will be a goat in every play before <laughs> we're done tonight. First down 10 44 yard line. <laughs> Pressure and Ferguson gets it off to Curtis Brown. He'll get a couple out of it. Scott Studwell was raining all over Brown. Joe Ferguson made another major league play there. Big pressure. Rather than take the sack, he even gets a completion. Picked up four on it, Giff. Yep. And that could have been a big loss. Curtis Brown, as I mentioned, was a fullback a year ago without Joe Cripps. They moved him to the tailback spot where they utilize him much more on the run and on the pass. 2.30 remaining in the third quarter. Minnesota on top, 22-13. They lead by nine. Buffalo picks up the blitz, and this time Tuttle does not hold on, and a flag is down. We'll have holding. It'll work against Buffalo. Wow, that is really terrible time for them. Just had things going for them. But we've got 2.19 left in this, the third quarter. You saw on Monday night pass, although I don't pretend that either of these teams has the explosive Dallas offense. You saw how quickly Dallas got back in the game against an exceptional Steeler team. Anything can this time happen here. Holding number 72, second down. But how the thing about it is that Buffalo really is only a touchdown and a field goal behind. And that would put them ahead. I understand. If they can get Gary Anderson. Back. <laughs> they really don't have any big comeback to make. And they're up around midfield now. 
Second down, 16, the ball right at midfield. Lewis, split to the right by Joe Ferguson. Ferguson coming down with the Brown, and he'll have the first down inside the 25-yard line. What a beautifully thrown ball, but a well-conceived pass. The middle of the field is open. They're doubling both outside receivers. The middle is a here's ground level shot from behind of Ferguson backing up. This time he has good protection. Curtis Brown is circling down the middle of the field. You'll see behind the linebackers there are no safety men back there because they're covering the wide receiver. And Curtis Brown looking better on each play. He works well out of the backfield, something he did not do a lot of a year ago. 26 yard pickup. The Bill following that holding penalty. Come right back. Going to Butler. Uh, Butler with a great catch at the six-yard line. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. That play was made possible by the prior play. They beat the double outside coverage for Vikings the time before. This time they have single coverage on Butler. He fakes the slant inside, throws the slant in to Butler, and he's got Turner by himself, and he beats it. Second Nobody off here in the third quarter. Nobody does it alone, Giff, but Butler has been the turning point, the decisive factor for Buffalo in this quarter. Butler, and five receptions, 90 yards. <laughs> Curtis Brown. <laughs> to the three. It'll be second and goal. Wiggle through for three. I agree with you, Howard, but Joe Ferguson has showed great poise the third quarter. He's really got the team going. Called the right plays, made the right decisions. Got out of some trouble a couple of times. Amazing how a ball game has developed out of this. We kind of knew it was going to happen all the time because Minnesota didn't deliver the knockoff. You're the only one who did. Frank was looking at his watch. <laughs> Second and goal. They stand rise with one. No. Oh. And Ferguson tried to ease it in to Bramer incomplete. Well advised pass. That, that should have been interfering. I mean, <laughs> intercepted. Should have been intercepted. Threw it into a big crowd. Of course, Howard, you have to understand that was second down, and second down is not important. Only first and third down are important. I understand. You know, I watched you long enough to know <laughs> that all the downs were on the court. All right, here we go. From the end zone, Ferguson fakes the leaks up the middle. Plenty of protection. I don't know who he's trying to throw to here, but the only guy open is the Minnesota Vikings. Third down, goal to go, the ball at the three-yard line. Out of the shotgun. Ferguson, oh home by time. Goodness. He tries to go to Butler. Butler double covered. Double, double. Good double. coverage on the part of Willie Teal, and we'll see the field goal unit. An ill-advised throw by Joe there. He was double covered. He had plenty of protection. He didn't look for an alternate receiver. Time runs out here in the third quarter. Watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. That is the end of the third quarter with the score 22 13, Minnesota over Buffalo. And the fourth quarter, rather. Nick McAmire is out there. He is, was 0 for 2 last week. He has missed on one effort tonight of 43 yards. Matt Robinson. The quarterback is the holder. That, of course, gives Buffalo an option. Which they do not utilize. And McAmire draws the Bills within six once again. So we begin the fourth quarter and it is now Minnesota 22, Buffalo 16. 21-yard effort by Mickemeyer. Johnson 200. He's respecting Nick Mickemeyer, quite frankly, because Mickemeyer kicks the ball high, not long, but he has a prevailing breeze that really is gusting quite strongly at times. Prevailing breeze. We are being assailed by a hurricane. It's a cold. <laughs> well, I would think if with the wind behind him, he should get the ball down to the goal line or even into the end zone. Let's see. High kick that will carry to the three. And here comes Eddie Payton. Payton goes down at the 23-yard line. A little, little gap there. Close so quickly. Oh, look out. Very Close stats now. 
Now Buffalo has the leadership in total yards. And they have a greater time of possession. First downs, they've gone up to Minnesota. What a difference. Gary Butler made. Amazing how mm -hmm. it is. They really came back. First downs are important in Minnesota here because of field position. The kick from down here with the wind in your face was tough. Buffalo battling back. Just before halftime, they were down 19 to nothing. Now they trail by six. 22-16. Kramer on first down. Sammy White, no, yes, out of bounds. Oops. Sammy White saying, yes, it was good, getting some support from his teammates on the sidelines, but the official was right there. You're right, Francis. This series of downs is critical. It is. It really, here's the reverse angle. Kramer throwing to White. We'll see if he was inbounds or not. I know one thing. He was open again. Here we go. There's one. But the one was out. <laughs> Even the one was out. That's no call. <laughs> <laughs> Pistol was right there, wasn't it? All right, here's unimportant second down, Howard. Makes no difference what they're doing second down. That's what I heard over the weekend. Second and ten. Kramer under pressure, lets it go, and is taken by Leo Lewis, and another flag is down. Wait a minute, Lewis yeah. may have pushed off. Good Let's well see have. what this call is. But a great effort by Tommy Kramer. He was looking at nothing but Buffalo's bills right in his face. We're going to find out quickly. Kramer's going down to find out. And what is it going to be? Yes, Lewis pushed off. Now bring it back. You can see it. Major penalty here. You know, I hear all the talk about what's the most important down, first or third down. Every down is important. Of There's course. no one important down. 45-yard pickup negated. There's Fred Wyant. Pass interference, number 87. Second down. That's about a 60-yard penalty, man. With the reception and the ensuing penalty. Now Vikings. Now back at their own 13-yard line. Vikes in trouble. Willow Lewis will remind you again. Is in there. Tonight, Ahmad Rashad left early in the game, holding what appeared to be his right hamstring. Second down, 20. Comes the pressure. Kramer gets it off. He has to hurry it. He goes out to Ted Brown incomplete. He was well covered out there. Tremendous Isaiah Robertson was there. Tremendous pressure by Daryl Irvin, number 97. Buffalo now playing tough defensive football. Well, it's the best pressure we've seen on the passer all night. We've said it before. If you don't get pressure on the quarterback, you don't play very good pass defense. Tough situation. Tommy Kramer, third down and 20. His kicker will be kicking against that stiff breeze that we've talked about. I'll tell you, this puts the quarterback in a very tough position. Certainly on his does. own end of the field, he's got to protect the football, but he needs a first down. He's running out of time right now. The 25-second clock. He'll have to hurry. Just does get it off. Struggles to unload the ball. Gets it out to Darren Nelson. They say, no, he trapped it. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And Tommy Kramer doesn't like it. Kramer is really... He better be careful. He needs another penalty. Yep, you're right. There's trouble in the Twin Cities. Here's Tommy going back. Getting some pressure from the outside against the best pressure Buffalo's had all night the last two plays. Gets it out to Darren Nelson. Let's look at it. I think it hit the ground myself. I do, too. Yeah, I think it was a good call by the official. Tommy was, was still upset with that interference call that negated that 45-yard game by Leo Lewis. Well, Coleman's got his work cut out for him right here. Coleman kicks it high and short. And a flag is down. Does take a Minnesota bounce. Taken there by Mike Mosley. Again, a flag is down on both sides of the field. Howard, did you see how that wind held up the ball? It just I stopped. did, but I'm trying to figure out the flags on each side of the field, laterally speaking. Minnesota going for a record today. Holding defensively. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Now, this is critical. If it's before the kick, it's a first down for Minnesota. If it's after the kick, it's taken from where the ball was returned to. I think they're going to call it after the kick. Now, the one flag went down before. The other went down after. No, they're going to call it after the kick, Frank. There it goes. The Buffalo will have possession their own 43-yard line. But they've still got excellent field position. They do. Not as good as they might have wanted. <laughs> Holding number 45. First down. But they've got better than 14 minutes left. There's all the time in the world for both teams. And Bill Simpson was holding after the punt. As they say on the corner, the game is still in the balance. Six-point spread with 14-16 <laughs> remaining in the game. Minnesota 22, Buffalo 16. Ferguson checking it off. Gets the blitz, reads the blitz. He has Butler. He oh. does not hold on. But a good call by Ferguson. He read the blitz. He knew he would have single coverage. It was Butler on John Turner. Ferguson just overthrowing slightly. Uh, that's right. A great call. And the throw just too tough here for the catch. Look at it. Well, he had Turner beat. Oh, it wasn't a beat. terrible throw. It was catchable, man. I, that's catchable. Very catchable. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Butler's a great receiver. That sounds like a quarterback talk. Well, he, you know, he's a great receiver. You missed some. That one was very catchable. Sounds like talking to talking the way he threw. <laughs> I didn't get it that close to him. <laughs> Second down, 10. Frank Lewis slips to the top of your screen. Ferguson snaps it out quickly to Curtis Brown. And Brown will lose yardage back to the 40-yard line, about three. John Swain up there quickly on defense for Minnesota. Now in this game, we are seeing something like you often see in a prize fight, shifting tides and ebb and flow. Now a critical series for Buffalo and a critical down. You know, you don't look at that reception by Butler as a, as a real critical error, but it really is. That's a 40-yard gain, a possible touchdown. If Ferguson could have thrown it a little bit more perfect and he could have made a little better catch, it turns the game back around to Buffalo strike. Buffalo out of a shotgun, four wide receivers, Butler, Mosley, Lewis, and Tuttle. Ferguson. Smokes one off. It was you. deflected by John Swain. He was lucky that Swain didn't pick that off. Absolutely he was. That was a touchdown for Swain. Here's the end zone. You'll see Ferguson again getting a lot of pressure. He's not really able to step into the ball like he would like to. Throws him off just a little bit. He did get the ball where he wanted to. Swain almost makes the play of the night. Fourth down. Out comes Greg Cater and Eddie Payton will drop for Minnesota. There he is at his own 15-yard line. Great they have here. Gip is the win. Yep, it'll be a good punt. High snap. Cater handles it nicely. Oh. Hangs it high, but it doesn't turn over. And it's taken there by Nord at the 23-yard line. We have timeout with 13.09 remaining in the fourth quarter, and Minnesota has the ball back. Mommy, Daddy's here. When the Ross's TV set was standing. Fifth Stadium, Orchard Park, suburb, Buffalo, New York. We were in Dallas on Monday night. We'll be with the Giants at Giants Stadium against Green Bay on Monday night. We'll be in Kansas City next Thursday night, a week from tonight. And we'll be in Cleveland a week from next Monday night for Cleveland, Cincinnati. First down, 10. Kramer from his own 23. Watch out. Aaron Nelson was there. Yes, he yes, was sir. inbounds, and that will be a first down Minnesota. Great play by Tommy Kramer. Had some pressure, kept working, kept himself alive. Nelson got free, made a good throw. Tough to defense this. You're watching, he's trying to go right. Just Gets a little pressure. Just yes, watch sir. Nelson get position. That's why this kid is going to be such a star. Yeah, that was Look a well-thrown ball. Yes, it was. Only a linebacker nice. scrambling around. And a fine effort by Nelson. First and ten, Minnesota. 44-yard line. Kramer hooks it out to Joe Simpson. Spencer upended midfield. 
and gets about six yards. It'll be second down and four. And quite frankly, Joe Sensor, I think, is still affected by those right. ribs he bruised. Yep. You're exactly right, and that's why he hasn't been more of a factor in this game than I. One of the remarkable athletes in the league. We've told you many times of his basketball background. I remember the last time Minnesota had the ball. The last series, Buffalo got good pressure on the pass. Minnesota went nowhere. This time, so far, the first two plays, no pressure once again. Still a three-man line. Second down and four. Kramer oh. it slipped out of his hand. He gets it back, losing about a yard. Very fortunate. I guess when you throw the ball 50, 60 times, you've <laughs> got to make an error somewhere along the line. Well, let's watch it from the end. Don't see why I think the ball just slipped out of his hand as he was drawing his hand. Oh, he's, he was puff faking, and he didn't hold on. Well, you know how <laughs> easy that is to do. <laughs> Notice who was there. He hit the chalk down right between the four and the zero. Eugene Marr, number 54, mm -hmm. Saginaw Valley, was the guy closing in. Very the count. Get to the top of your screen. Gary Butler is left. Safety blitz. They're all coming. And a flag a is flag. down. Tommy Kramer read the blitz, tried to go to the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And a flag is down, far downfield. I think it's going to go against Buffalo. Well, everybody ran into each other. The two offensive receivers crisscrossed, and I don't know who hit who. But the officials know. Kramer's a feisty guy. He gets right in the middle of the action wherever it might be. Nobody's going to accuse him of being timid and not a competitor. Another that trait from the man he inherited the job from. I was calm and cool. Never got in those arguments. Tell you, Isaiah isn't happy. Look at Bill Simpson talk to Kramer. Now, what he says, if Tommy just settled down, you know. You let everything go your way tonight. We we deserve this break. Maybe the flag was dropped by mistake. <laughs> Could be the 22nd well, penalty of this game. Here we go. We're picking up the flag. The pass could not have been caught. I no knew it. Uh -huh. I knew it. That? I was looking for that call earlier in the game. They didn't give it. See? <laughs> Kramer's going to chew the fight a little more there with you. Look at, when, when you look at Bud, who makes a decision a pass can't be caught? You look at the sneer on his face. All right, here's the reverse angle. There's old Tommy Boyd rearing back to throw it. He's having to throw his back foot, too, because of the rush. See, everybody kind of gathered there together. Let's see if you can pick out anything. Well, it looks like you might have had a grab there, but everybody's kind of... I don't together. know. Well, academic it brings up fourth down, brings out Greg Coleman. <laughs> Coleman kicking against the stiff breeze. Mike Mosley, Robin Holder deep for the Bills. Good punt. Coleman gets one to turnover. Bearcats call for executed at the 10-yard line by Mike Mosley. Buffalo deep in their own territory. They trail 22-16. 12 3 remaining in the fourth quarter. Stick around. We'll be right back. We're back. Frank Gifford, Howard Cosell, Fran Tarkenton. First down 10. The Buffalo Bills at their own 11-yard line. Ferguson brings them up. That's Jerry Butler has been a big factor in the comeback at the top of your screen. Number 80. And no penalty call. Butler was taken down hard by Willie Teal. As he was trying to escape the line of scrimmage, it'll be second down and ten. We'll remind you tonight, Nightline will examine the question why Sadar Gutsbade was executed by the government of Iran. Jody Powell, White House spokesman during the time of the hostage crisis in Iran, will be Ted Hupple's guest tonight. Watch Nightline tonight after the late local news. Minnesota continues to double the outside receivers. Ferguson announced that I'm going to challenge the double, try to get to him, but if he does that, he needs time to throw the ball. Mullaney again was in his lap. And right. I'd throw like that. Frank Lewis left. Jerry Butler right. Ferguson. 
tries to get it to Mosley. Another flag is down. This one could give us a holding call. In the secondary, very likely on the defense. But thrown towards the line of scrimmage. Matt Flair is oh. in there once again. And once again, he doesn't like it. He's going to talk again. He might throw that white cap Matt, up in the air Matt, again. Matt, just hold yourself together. Remember what happened to you in college. Missed your senior year. Bikes were able to sneak you through outside of Iowa State. Just keep your peace. That's defensive holding. Ties the team record in penalty. Holding, number 49, first down. That's Kurt North. Enough. Enough. Yep, Keith, Keith North. North. First down is up to the 16-yard line. I'm impressed with the Viking pass rush. That time it was Duck White putting heat on Ferguson. 79 passes between the two quarterbacks tonight. 37 by Ferguson. 42 by Kramer. Roosevelt leaks. Bullying ahead. Ooh, up to the 35-yard line. The big man, all 230 pounds of him. Bullying for nine yards. That's his good offensive line blocking on the run. There goes Reggie McKenzie, 67. He gets a block. The center gets a block. Grant, he runs over the safety man. That's good running, good blocking. You have that? You get a pretty good game. Leaks, of course, came in 1980, playing a lot more this year with the move of Curtis Brown to the tailback spot. Leaks had five years at Baltimore before coming here in 80. Second down, less than a yard for the first down. Here comes Curtis Brown, right side. The surge should have picked up the first down. Probably Doug Martin did. in there first. Tommy Kramer is going to have a tired right wing tonight. He's already thrown it 42 times. But like I said, at the top. First and 10 at Buffalo Bills, 27-yard line. The birds continue to roll. They beat the Yankees 3-1. to Detroit over Boston. Final Texas beat Minnesota. Game out. Frank Lewis is left. Butler is out to the right. Lucas into the air once again. Goes out to the tight end. Mark Kramer. He picks up seven. Toronto beat California. Seattle beat Kansas City. In the margin is two games, Kansas City. White Sox rallied, beat Oakland. That's killed Montreal. You see the San Diego, San Francisco score. Baltimore only a game behind Milwaukee. Second down three. Buffalo with a win in their season opener a few days ago. Buffalo taking Kansas City. Minnesota defeated Tampa Bay. Both of them looking to go 2-0 tonight. One of them will not. Ferguson. Butler. First down, Buffalo. 43-yard line. Every clutch pass has been the butt. Well, good call by Ferguson. It's a running situation. The Vikings played the run. They played Jerry Butler single. One of the first times they've done it all night. He can beat that. Right here. And Willie Teal will pop into your screen. Well, he beat the linebacker, McNeil. They had him isolated. Teal came up late. Screw. Good reception. Got a first down. Let's go, Gip. First and ten. 9.35 remaining in the game. Look at the pressure. Oh. Ferguson. And Roosevelt Leakes has trouble once again. Part of it supplied by this man, Scott Studwell. I empathize with Ferguson. It's difficult to throw under that kind of pressure. They just move in the middle of that offensive line back, and they're all in his lap. And McNeil really was all over Leakes there. It has to look good to Bud Grant, who had really a lot of trouble with his pass rush a year ago. They think it's much tougher this year with the move of Martin Mullaney to the right side. They only had 33 sacks a year ago. That's what he set out to improve. And they've improved it off the showing tonight against one of the better blocking offensive lines in the league, the Buffalo Bills. Second down and 10. Look at that. 
Ferguson and is picked off. That's the result of a great pass rush. John Swain steps in front of it, and there was pressure once again on Joe Ferguson. He had a hard time seeing Swain, who's in a dead sprint from deep in the secondary, he stepped right in front of the receiver. Here it is. You'll see Ferguson go back, and he's going to get all kind of pressure. It breaks his rhythm down. He's had to move back up. Another hand in his face. They actually hit his arm. And takes something off the ball. Swain's got an interception. I didn't know who, who it was that was there. Matt nice Blair. The field the position. They'll be at the 49-yard line of the Buffalo Bills when we come back. Stay with us. There's John Swain. We're back. Rich Stadium, just outside of Buffalo, 22-16. Minnesota has the lead by six points with 9.24 remaining in the game. John Swain has just picked off Joe Ferguson. And Minnesota, good field position. Single setback is Ted Brown. Tommy Kramer looks it over. Ted Brown finds an opening over the right side, stays on his feet, struggles up close to the 40-yard line for a gain of eight yards. Now, you got to know how Minnesota's thinking now. Of course, they would like to have a touchdown, but a field goal is very important. They want to get the ball inside the 25-yard line and give their kicker, Dan Meyer, a chance to kick it and put him a touchdown the field goal away from this team. And again, Dan Meyer would be kicking against a very stiff breeze. Well, they might better get him inside the 15. I thought you might want to <laughs> maybe the adjust that. <laughs> Second down, about one and a half for the first. No. And no. And the ball comes loose. No, no, he was down first. I think yeah. they had him back beyond the line, behind the line of scrimmage. As a matter of fact, Haslip is there, and Bill Simpson, whistle is blown. There'll be a loss of about a yard. How about that? Congressman Jack Kemp. Little known, nor... Not terribly long remembered, a former teammate of mine with the New York Giants. If Jack is watching, he'll be happy to see that statistic again. <laughs> well, that's about the only negative one he had. You talk about supply side economics. All right. To throw the football. Third down. There's a loss of a half a yard, so it'll be third down and two. Kramer will put it in the air. Leo Lewis, a 5'8", couldn't get high enough for that one. That was a great defensive effort by the Bills. They had so little. Hazlitt made the key play. The key play was a second down play, which, of course, is not important down, Howard, but it was a key, was a key <laughs> play in that, in that series. I was a little surprised to see Tommy go out to Leo Lewis on an out ball 10 yards down the field in that situation. He'll more likely go to a tight end or to a short back receiver to pick up two yards. They didn't. They got a punt. Good and defense. That means Ray ball. Coleman. Robert Holt will guess with Coleman. Who put one out early in the game at the four-yard line. The angle for the same sideline. He may have something working. He's got it working, I'll tell you that. It's a perfect bounce to stop there at the six-yard line. Send line. Kills it at the six-yard line. So Buffalo trailing. Still by six, the 7:37 remaining in the game. We'll start on offense deep in their own territory. We'll be right back. Buffalo, 94 yards away. They have seven minutes and 37 seconds. The big question: Can the offensive line of the Bills pull it back together again and start pressuring and holding for Joe Ferguson? He's been under a lot of pressure. He sends Leeks over the left side, trying to make Minnesota at least partially think of run. Yeah, if you know the interesting thing about getting the Vikings getting Charlie Johnson from the Eagles to play middle guard. The Viking coaches say it's not so much that Charlie Johnson is a good player, which he is, but the effect he's had on the other young defensive linemen in Minnesota, they're all playing at a higher level because Charlie Johnson is there. And he's, he's a great seen, team player, good leader. We've seen a lot of action tonight. James White. Troubled by a sore ankle. Charlie Johnson, a three-time pro bowler from Philadelphia this year. Second and seven. Brown in motion. Flag is down. I thought Ferguson fires and is picked off with one hand by Bremer. 
But again, a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. I thought Minnesota was clearly offside. I thought it was Doug Martin, 79, that was probably jumped too quick. And they'll undoubtedly accept the penalty. Yep. That will bring it back. Well, they probably will. As you say, except the penalty to keep the down the same. But the great defensive line will be also because they're trying to anticipate and get that jump on the ball. How many times have you seen a Harvey Martin offside a lot, but he's a great pass rusher. The options being laid out to Reggie McKenzie, the field captain. And O.J. Simpson's closest friend. Reggie McKenzie is great. What a great. Offside, number 77, second down. Doug Mark Mullaney. <laughs> Offside for Minnesota. The Minnesota penalties breaks tonight. the record tonight. And Bud Grant doesn't like a lot of penalties. Preaches against it. Some teams it doesn't matter, but he doesn't like it. I put that wrongly. Second down and three. Ball at the 13-yard line of Buffalo. Leaks left side, runs into Big Fred McNeil. Down he goes, short of the first down at the 15. The juice was Mac's closest friend. He wouldn't let Mac get out of sight. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. There, there it is. is. Starting their own ring of honor here. Exactly the so. Yep. Just like at Texas Stadium. Wish you could call this the house that OJ built. What a player. Yep, he sure was. Third down, a long one, and a very important long one for the Buffalo Bills. I should say. And Ferguson goes oh, for a bundle. Off. Frank Lewis has it. What a gambling call that was. Frank Lewis gets Buffalo out of their own territory, deep in their own territory, to the Minnesota 46-yard line as Frank Lewis stretched all those Long arms out to take it away from John Turner. He's got John Turner man-on-man -man coverage, which he have in a short yardage situation. He runs a great pattern, makes a good adjustment to the ball. Ferguson gets it there, gloves and all, he catches it. Big play. I'll tell you, third and one. And, and if it works, it's a great call. A gambling one, indeed. The second knocks. great play of the game. The other, the touchdown catch. Ferguson now has his 300 yards for the night on first down. Curtis Brown, right side, in trouble. Oh, he's an opening, it. and look at Curtis Brown inside the 40-yard line. Gain of seven. I don't believe it. I thought he was hit for a loss. He should have lost a couple. Nifty running. Really good running. I was about to say Chuck Knox deserves a lot of credit for the call he made. Chuck Knox is a conservative coach, as we all know, but he came up with a... A not so conservative call there. He has a way of getting the big play out of his feet. Remember at halftime, we were showing you great moments. Right. It was Frank Lewis making a great play there. Ahmad Rashad pulled the game out by one point against Oakland eight years ago tonight. Here comes Roosevelt Leach, right side. He'll get the first down, down to the 33-yard line. Crowd has really come alive. Things grow curious and curious. Inside the 33, they mark it. 80,000 plus here tonight. And they're on a roll right now. Minnesota even blitzed that down, which is a strong defense against the run, could not stop it. Frank Lewis goes out to the left, and out to the right is Jerry Butler. That has been the key factor in the turnaround by Buffalo tonight. Ferguson will have to hurry. He gets it off. Lewis is open. And again in front of Willie Teal, but a great move by the 35-year-old Frank Lewis, playing like a young rookie. He drove inside on Willie Teal. Watch him here. He, may, he thinks to the post or to the inside. Gets Teal turned completely around. Ferguson delivers the ball. And again, Ferguson made a great throw because he had a defensive lineman right in his face. A 
good execution. And he has shifted been... from Butler to Lewis at exactly the right time, diversifying the receivers of what they've done to deal has been evident to every viewer. 14-yard line, first and 10. 3.35, and the clock is moving. Roosevelt leaks. Down to the 11-yard line. Did you see the head of Studwell there? Exactly. He, he saved them. Otherwise, Leeks might have gone in all the way. That what a hit. Big man that Studwell sent backwards. Watch it here. Leeks breaks through the line of scrimmage. He's a big man. He's strong. He's got his shoulders squared away to go upfield. Look at Studwell. Knocks him back. It's a major league hit. No one a surprise as Roosevelt Leeks. That doesn't happen often to that big man. Gain of three, second down and seven. The ball at the 11. Time remaining in the game. Ferguson for Butler. That's it. That's it. Butler. That's it. Touchdown and a great Beautiful. timing pattern. Ferguson to Butler. Beautiful. Great throw, great reception, and a lot of time remaining for Minnesota. Yep. What a pair of receivers. Oh. They've proved themselves tonight. What a comeback. Jerry Butler, Frank Lewis. One, the great veteran. The other, the youngster who once scored five touchdowns in a single game against the Jets. Took a long time to happen, but Buffalo is playing like they can play. When they book and run, defense on Butler. Bump and run's not good enough. John Turner with the step late. Good throw. Mickemeyer. He missed one earlier. Very important here, Jeff. This for the lead. Oh. And for the first time ever against Minnesota, Buffalo has the lead. But Minnesota has time. 248 left in this ball game. There goes the head of blitz on. You'll see Blair coming from the right side. Butler gets a step, perfect throw. His outside shoulder gets his feet down, I would imagine. He's in. We're talking crowd. They're singing once again. Jerry oh. Butler has caught seven passes for two touchdowns, 111 yards. And all in the second half. the chant is defense coming from the hoarse voices of 80,000 fans. <laughs> Look at that crowd. Turned out to be quite a game, didn't it? The first half disaster and then this. And as I mentioned, 248 remaining. Eight years ago today, this kind of finish gift. Minnesota, with two timeouts as we watch Eddie Payton. And now, as the Bills team is fired up, as Payton goes down inside his 20-yard line. Well, Minnesota's in a tough position. He wins against them. Buffalo's defense is fired up. Buffalo has established good field position against the Vikes, but the Vikes have Tommy Kramer, and he has been here before, and he has brought his team back before. One of the finest in the business, even though Tommy Kramer has only been a starter for three years at the two-minute drill. He has won so many games in the final two minutes. Remember the timeout that was wasted early here in the second half by Minnesota? They have two remaining. From the shotgun. Kramer is sacked. Sherman White. The veteran from California who started with Cincinnati. Acquired by Trey. Critical, critical play. And they haven't had a pass rush most of the night, but when they needed it here at the end of the game, Sherman White said why he's the great veteran he is. And you think Bud's upset? No. <laughs> he doesn't change. The loss to the 12-yard line is second down and 17. Steve Riley letting Sherman White get around him in a straight sprint to Tommy Kramer.
Kramer, the intended receiver. Sammy White. Sammy White. Third down and 17. And 2.04 remaining in the game. Boy, they love their football here in Buffalo. I don't think there is a single seat empty. And at one point, recall, near the end of the first half, Buffalo trailing by 19 to nothing. No shotgun right from under the center. On third and 17. Kramer, White, in and out of the hands, incomplete his fourth down. And Bill Simpson almost had an interception within an island. They'll get the two-minute warning, and Bud Grant will have an opportunity to ponder the situation, as will his counterpart, Chuck Knox. We'll be back in a wild and zany Rich Stadium in Buffalo in a moment. Radio Shack's world of the TRS-80 comes the color computer. Is it a serious computer or just fun and games? The decision's been made. 159 remaining, Minnesota with two timeouts. Greg Coleman will be punting from the end zone. And Buffalo has nobody deep. They're going to let the ball hit and bounce. They don't want to risk the fumble of the punt return. Coleman hangs it up. Oh, and it takes a very definite Buffalo Bill bounce all the way back to the 36-yard line. Coleman doesn't believe it. It turned over, and on artificial surface, the ball will take some funny bounces. That one took well, a the tremendous bill. bounce for Buffalo. Bills had never beaten the Vikes. They had lost to them three previous times. They looked to certainty to lose tonight. They're in aptitude apparent in the first half. Their comeback, which began within the final two minutes of the first half, continued in the second half. It's been a tribute to Ferguson, to Butler, to Frank Lewis, to a devastating defensive line in the late going, and above all, perhaps, to Chuck Knox. You saw Ferguson move over to the referee, checking on the timeouts that Minnesota has remaining. They have two. They can stop the clock twice. Roosevelt leaks. You better believe he's been told to hold on to the football. Not that it's necessary, but it happens in the huddle. Just a little friendly reminder. Loss of about three. It'll be second down and 13. Ferguson on the night. 330 yards passing. Butler, 111 receiving. I'd like to remind you, this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Dotson, who invites you to see all the value-packed Dotson cars and trucks at your dealer today. And by Lowenbrow, if you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. One timeout remains for Minnesota. Jeff, I've really been impressed with Ferguson tonight. He had a lot of pressure. He hung in there tough. He made plays when he had to in the second half. He really was a real pro tonight. And on the sidelines, Chuck Knox talking it over with Joe Ferguson. A week from Sunday, the Bills will be playing at Houston. And a week from Sunday, the Vikings will be playing in the Metrodome. Up in Minneapolis, they'll meet Dallas. Uh-oh. All right. Hold your cards, boys. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Get on with the game. Second down, a little more than 12 yards for the first down. One timeout remains for Minnesota. Watch out. And covering the ball quickly, Ferguson tripped coming out of there. Curtis Brown, I believe, the intended 
ball carrier, and he comes up with it. And that will be the final timeout for Minnesota. We're going to be watching. Let's take a look at this again from the reverse angle. You see Ferguson pulling away. Did he get stepped on? Yes, he did. Yes, Reggie yes. McKenzie got him with his right foot. That was close. He hit Curtis Brown on the thigh. This could have been a fumble recovery. The Vikings could have had the ball in good field position. That's, That's why people fall down with the quarterback in situations like this. That's what kept happening Monday night between Rafferty and Dan White. The safe thing to do here but on every down is to fall with the quarterback. They can use their timeouts. You're, you're right rush, about that. You're not going to rush the ball uh, for a first down. I just want to say this has been a tremendous team effort and comeback by Buffalo. I neglected to mention a couple of minutes ago smallish Curtis Brown and Roosevelt Leakes, who began by dropping four out of five but came on to play yep. enormously well. And they've done this without Joe Cribs. Well, it's amazing. We said at the end of the first half, the Vikings had them on the ropes, never delivered the knockout punch, even in the third quarter when they had a chance to knock it out again. They kicked field goals instead of got touchdowns. They let Buffalo stay in too long, and now they're in danger of losing to the Bills. Minnesota cannot stop the clock. They have no more timeouts. 138 remains. I would drop on the ball. Buffalo can take 60 seconds off the clock. Curtis Brown, right side, hugging the football. Scott Stedwell is there defensively. That brings up fourth down. We'll tell you once again, the executive producer of ABC Sports is Bruno Arledge. Tonight's game produced by Bob Goodrich, directed by Chet Forty, technical director Joe Chavo, associate director Jack Graham, technical manager Coach Coltrane, our unit manager Lenny Nathan, assistant to the producer John McGinnis and Kim Bolton, Jerry Klein back with us for the night. Staff some research, our spotter Steve Bazika. And fourth down. And out comes the punter, Greg Cater. And they will take the five-yard penalty. They'll let it all go down. They won't even bother. They'll get penalized five, and then they'll stop the clock and punt. And they stop the clock with 51 seconds. They'll mark off the five yards for delay a game. And I know why Chuck Knox is running the ball, because he didn't want to have to get in a situation where he has to punt. It's not a lock situation. You got the snap back to the guy. You got a possible punt block. And no team in the league over the past decade has well, blocked 15 more. years has blocked more punts than Minnesota. And Minnesota has a, well, they have 11 men. They have 11 men trying to block the punt. Nobody's back deep. And Buffalo is nervous. And I would be too. Greg Cater knows his job is not to provide something of beauty. Just get it off. And he got a beauty. Oh. And more than that, <laughs> he took a, a buffalo bounce. bounce. Did not go in the <laughs> end zone. Did. 41 seconds remain. Minnesota without a timeout. And they are 94 yards away from the goal line. And here he goes. Good snap. Field the ball good. There we go. And the... Really, they held out the Vikings very well. They gave him room enough to kick, and he got rough in the meantime. <laughs> Mind you, again, will be a giant stadium on Monday night. Green Bay and the Giants. Green Bay's got some people this year. We and could uh, see that early when we had them against the Bengals. Remember, Frank? Or they have some receivers. Kramer with no timeouts. Larry LeCount didn't get out of bounds. He did not get out of bounds. That hurts. Clock will continue. Buffalo leading by one at one point in the game before the half. They were down 19 to nothing. Kramer wanted LeCount to go upfield. Oh. He didn't Clock get out of bounds continue. either. This will be history. That's it. That's it. Buffalo, for the first time in four meetings, has defeated the Minnesota Vikings. Buffalo now with a 2-0 record. They beat Kansas City this past Sunday. Minnesota is 1-1, one one, following their win last Sunday in the Tampa Bay. They lost tonight. And look at the crowd. They'll talk proudly at least for the next 10 days. 
A great effort. A great comeback. Certainly the game not aesthetically beautiful for the first quarter and three quarters. But Buffalo stayed in there. Once again, the final score, 23-22, Buffalo defeats Minnesota. Remember, stay tuned for ABC News Nightline after your local news, 1130 on the West Coast, over most of these ABC stations. Travel arrangements made through and a promotion will be paid by the United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Recognized around the world as the leader in sports television, we'll see you Monday night from Giant Stadium, the Giants in Green Bay.